goosing in there. Um, <laughs> March 15th, uh, 2023, Mapleton School District Number 32 School Board Meeting. I will say that um, we are not going to have Mary Ellen here tonight. I don't know if you know that, but she will not be attending. And Andrea won't be here till 7, so we will take care of other business. Welcome, community and um, esteemed guests. <laughs> yes, extended community. Um, let's do our Pledge of Allegiance and move on. Um, you want to lead us there? Sure. Go for it. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Our mission is to provide a safe learning environment where students are encouraged and empowered to reach their educational and personal potential. We strive to base all of our decisions on what is best for all students. Uh, reviewing the agenda, any changes or additions? No, I think just um, the, sorry, not, there we go, the state testing presentation we're going to do at 7 Monday. Yes. And so we may jump out of order on this, um, but no other additions that I can think of right now. Okay. Well, I do want to introduce one of our folks in the audience. You know both, the, you know, and uh, Abby well, but this is Jonathan Light, and he's a Springfield School Board uh, member, and he will be assisting us in a discussion about standardized testing. And Roscoe Karen is coming as well, but he's just not here yet. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Okay. Um, public comment on agenda items. What do we have? Uh, I might not be like you, but nice try. Do we? So, public comment? Anything? Any public comment? No. All right. Uh, okay, so we have moved into aligning for student success plan presentation. That's you, Sue. That's me. All right. Mm. Jaren, what do I hit to connect again? Today I sent the 23 pages of narrative responses um, to you all, and um, I'll give some context about what the plan is, um, but just uh, for everybody else who, Abby and anybody listening, um, we will have that posted up on the website like tomorrow um, so that you can see the full plan. This is due the 31st of the month, but it has to be approved by the board, so technically is finished the 15th. It's long. It got finished this morning. It's not online yet, <laughs> but the board did see it before the voting, um, or at least had access to it today. Just for my sense of the evening, can you give me a sense about how long this presentation will be? Um, I think 15. Cool. That's cool. It's 15 to I want to say in the 15 to 20 range. Perfect. Yeah. And um, we do have to have, oh, I guess that's the one thing I should have said about um, we should have open uh, time following and dur during and following this for any public comment on it. Cool. Um, and then the action items down later when everybody's here. All right. So, um, all right. Let's take it away. Purpose for this presentation to share what was prioritized in the plan, given the range of inputs, to explain how the plan was developed, to hear additional feedback on the plan now that it has been developed, and to seek board. Um, some context about the um, integrated plan. Um, so two, two, three years ago, is that true? Two or three years ago, um, there was a significant investment in Oregon education, student investment account, students under the Student Success Act, added um, $2 billion per biennium into state education funding through the corporate activity tax. Um, we've and this is the work I led up, or led and laid up the ESD, um, supporting districts uh, in Lane County with um, the student investment account process. Um, the feedback across the 
state was, this is great, it's a big lift, and we're doing reporting and community engagement and needs assessments in all of these different uh, plans and buckets. Can you please start to put those together to decrease the amount of like administrative tasks that we have? And the state is responding. Um, so uh, there's six programs, um, Measure 98, or high school success, you've probably heard it called both, um, the student investment account. Um, continuous improvement planning is uh, um, not necessarily connected to, to money, but a federal requirement that districts write an improvement plan every two years, and then if you're an identified district in need of more support, then you get money attached to that plan. Um, career and technical education, uh, everyday matters attendance. Um, uh, not so there is money for Perkins for, com for career and technical education. Everyday matters, there's not a specific pot of money, but there's requirements that we're supporting and um, trying to get students to school. Uh, and then early indicator and intervention systems is um, use of data to early identify struggling students. And when we say data, that, that's both data about student performance and the protocols for coming together and collaborating about the, the, like how to best support students. Um, and that's $3 per kid um, funding. In a small school like ours, you'll, you'll laugh when you see it's $402. Um, oh, wow. So um, the reason they took the, um, your la Springfield, it's more money than that in Springfield, we can share. Um, so uh, the, the reason these six were chosen first um, in these alignment efforts are that they share requirements um, and commitments uh, legislatively to um, authentic engagement, community engagement processes, um, equity-based decision-making, um, a, a really laser focus on um, supporting students who have been historically marginalized by the education system. They require, they all require a comprehensive needs assessment, and they all ask districts to engage in an ongoing continuous improvement cycle. Um, Did you tell us um, how many there are? There's six, six programs here, yeah. but how many altogether, when um, do you get to that? I know that answer, I, it's something close to like 167. Yeah, okay. We don't Great. necessarily <laughs> access all 167. Um, but <laughs> there's um, a total of 167 that districts reporting and all these different things. And so there's also an investment um, at the state level in reducing that administrative burden, especially for small districts. And there's some supports in place and some um, movement happening to kind of reduce that load for us as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's getting better. It's wow. a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Um, the, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm trying not, I'm trying to have a filter. We particularly love title reporting on <laughs> as fed reporting, right? right? Um, the, and then all of the integration they've framed around, uh, these four, uh, areas of well-rounded education, advancing equity, engaging community, and strengthening, um, systems and capacity within school districts. The, the narrative, if, you, um, if, an, if you've read that or when you read that, is um, all those questions are broken into the, kind of those four areas and there's obvious overlap between them um, because at some point you say the same thing over and over. A um, little bit of summary of the plan, I'm mostly just gonna read this to you and if you have any questions about any of them, I'm happy to answer, but high school success, measure 98, um, systems to improve graduation rates and college and career readiness. It includes um, connections to um, dual credit um, opportunities, um, dropout prevention, and um, career and technical education. The student investment account, um, the, the overarching goals are to meet students' mental health and behavioral health needs and increase, um, academic, increase academic achievement um, reducing disparities for student focal groups, and I'll talk about those focal groups in a second. Um, continuous improvement planning is a process involving educator collaboration, data analysis, professional learning, and reflection toward improved outcomes for students, and especially students experiencing disparity. Um, career and technical education, Perkins 
money. We're in the um, Lane CTE consortia. So when you see this budget, it says zero dollars. Um, our monies go to Lane ESD, and then we work in consortia to get the um, like benefits of that money. So um, the budget can look, seeing a zero doesn't mean we don't have CTE money and supports. Um, but C uh, current technical education, improving access and participation in education and training programs that prepare learners for high wage, high skill, in demand careers. Um, early indicator and intervention systems, I said development of data collection and analysis systems in which educators collaborate to identify supports for students. Um, big emphasis on ninth grade early warning, like making sure kids are on track um, to graduate there, but it can also extend to all grade levels. And then everyday matters embedded across the five other programs, focusing attention on student engagement, student culture, climate, safety, and culturally sustaining pedagogy. I have a question. Yep. Um, it says high wage, high skill, preparing our kids for high wage, high skill. What about medium wage and medium skill, and even low wage and low skill? Is that not something that a public school would be doing? Yeah, so Perkins money specifically is uh, about increasing access to and creating pipelines and creating access for students to go into high wage and high demand. Um, oh. careers okay um, and so there's like uh, workforce data across the county that looks at like okay here's here's where the needs are the culinary program that we're um, partnering with here there's a huge gap in filling uh, culinary chef restaurant positions in the tourism industry in this area Florence specifically and so it makes sense to put a culinary program out here to directly connect um, industry and education. So that, like, that's what they mean by the high wage, high skill. Um, usually I just say a high wage, and high demand. Um, and then it's pathway, like the pathway concept is that we're preparing for entry and top level within that whole path, pathway too. So that's just the money for, the, per, for Perkins. Yeah, Perkins okay, is like, and so sometimes, like, um, uh, here's one example. So early learning isn't necessarily a high wage, considered high wage. It's getting better. Um, but there's always been pushback on early learning as a CTE pathway, even though it's high demand. And so that says one thing about we need to pay more. Mm -hmm. And second, um, uh, the, the push from the CTE so that we can access Perkins is like, okay, look at the whole education spectrum. Don't just prepare for early learning, prepare for uh, working in anywhere in the education field because there are spaces where you can make more money. And as soon as you open up that to more education, then you can use Perkins money better. So. Okay, thanks. Yep. I just realized how much I talked with my hands. I know this about myself, but I was talking to you in the phone the other day and when I was in my car. <laughs> This guy walks by like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not waving at you, sir. <laughs> but if you think I'm that nice, hey. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the focal student groups that um, uh, it are mentioned in the legislation and then um, also uh, in when you read the narrative, um, speaks to you multiple months, like throughout the whole narrative. Um, statewide um, includes students of color, students with disabilities, emerging bilingual students, students navigating poverty, homelessness, and foster care, migrant students, students with experience of incarceration or detention, LGBTQ2IA plus students, um, students recently arrived, and other students who have historically experienced academic disparities. I bolded the students in our community um, who, who are represented focal student groups, and then um, the middle one that is in italics. Um, we don't currently have students with experience of incarceration or, or detention personally, but we do have students impacted by incarceration and mm -hmm. detention. And so I, I wanted to highlight like those impacts are felt. Um, and then other students who have historically experienced academic disparities for us specifically, we have a lot of first generation, um, called, like it, when our kids 
kids <laughs> go to post-secondary college experience, they would be first generation. And we have a lot of students who have lost, and this isn't a group that is talked about specifically in education, but it is real in our school students who have lost family members um, to death and are experiencing grief, um, a high percentage. Um, and students who have lost family members to other forms of um, you know, impacts of incarceration, um, abandonment, all, those, all the things, and students who are impacted by Family impacts of drug, drug use, substance abuse, those types of things, and so um, those are things we have talked about and, and had elevated as groups to attend to in our supports um, as we've gone through kind of the needs assessment process. So, can I have clarification? What does students recently arrived refer to? Is that recently arrived in the yeah. country in our district? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Versus migrant students, yeah. right? Migrant is. Not yet. Moving based on agriculture, and, and often they get lumped together as like, mm -hmm. um, and, and also with emerging bilingual students, and just separating out, there's a very different newcomer experience mm -hmm. to then um, have been right, right in the states and in the school system, but mobile, migrant, yeah. yep, mm -hmm. and migrant, and then um, some of both of those groups are also learning English. Okay, thank you. Yep. Just want to make sure I understood. Um, sorry. <laughs> Required plan. I was like, what are we, what's the slide about? This is what we've been doing. Um, <laughs> apparently, I finished this today. <laughs> so, um, so the requirements of this whole process, there's a lot of them. Um, intentional use of an equity lens in the prioritization um, and, and planning. Uh, large uh, requirements and uh, for authentic community engagement. Um, tribal consultation, so because of our size and funding, we're not required um, to do tribal consultation formally, um, and uh, we're still working with the, with um, Confederated Tribes of um, Kusloro and Kuen Sayusla to build that relationship and be in consultation, so there's a, there's a difference between those two things. Um, comprehensive needs assessment, um, consider so there's an Oregon quality education model um, and a number of student success plans that we should be um, attending to and, and weaving through um, this uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with the quality education model it is worth looking up um, in especially before any advocacy uh, about funding in um, the, the legislature and so was that devised by ODE or was that devised by legislators? Quality Education Commission is representative of like partners and ed uh, educators, administrators. Like it's a it's a commission uh -huh. that builds a group and they engage in research and best practices and they put together a like the ideal funding model for education. It's it's a it's a really good report. It's wor it's worth at least scanning. Um, and their funding, does anybody know off the top of their head? I want to say their funding 11. model is 4 like 11.4? Or yeah, I, I was at 11 point something. Um, uh, Maybe 11. Yeah, I, I think you're right. 11.4, and the right now COSA is advocating for 10.3, and the governor's budget is at 9.9. Uh, .9. So between 9.9 .9 and 11.4, right, is a significant difference. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but their model also talks about best practices and um, strategic planning and um, things things that that money should uh, the way it, you know what it should be invested in and best practices. So um, review and use regional CTE consortia inputs, and so we work closely with Lane um, CTE. Uh, further examination of potential impact um, of our plan on focal students, um, and then development of a four-year plan with clear outcome strategies and activities, and that's what I'll share here. Um, just in terms of this picture, uh, needs assessments and community engagement um, are, for me, like, uh, I, I think for a lot of educational leaders, but um, I will say for me specifically, um, I think those two things are hand in hand, and so any data is like a snapshot of what what's happening in that moment, and then like provides the questions 
um, and look for us to go work with our community and say, what, tell us why this is, what does this mean, and how do we either make it better or continue it, depending on what that story tells. Um, equity is at the core of all this, and so um, kind of taking all of those, um, uh, integrating and synthesizing in order to move to our outcomes. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you, but in general, um, community engagement highlights, uh, I would say our strength right now is student voice at the seventh through 12th grade level. Um, lots and lots of like both um, events and systems being built to have that ongoing um, feedback from students, ideas from students. Um, they are helping drive our improvement and the programs that we're building um, very strongly. Um, with staff, we have, um, I would say right now it's like discreet where th there's there's lots of questions and opportunities and conversations and we're working to build those systems so that it's smooth and kind of ongoing continuous um, engagement uh, family engagement is where we have the most room for growth I think we've been kind of in um, relationship building we're meeting a lot of people um, doc you know document those conversations and what we hear kind of drives the next conversation, um, but that's much less formal, um, and you'll see in one of our outcomes elevated as a, as a need. Um, and then county, uh, local and countywide partnerships with um, organizations, I think is a, 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 a strength in the terms that they're, it's growing rapidly, mm -hmm. so. Um, and uh, I, I put this, like, just because this plan is done doesn't mean the engagement stops, and that, that's what I hope you all see, the commitment that it is ongoing, and, and this is, like, just where we're at when this is due <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and obviously, a um, few things down here um, informing, or what our portrait of graduate engagement um, continuing this spring, April 3rd, um, which is a Tuesday community event, and, um, really working on laying out this yearly cycle of engagement and data collection and just like what, what inputs do we get, what do we do with them, how do we give them back to the community, laying out that plan moving forward um, into next year. So this is kind of the learning year, you'll see a really clear plan moving into next year. A whole bunch of needs assessments, uh, need, or needs highlighted here, and when we say needs, like some of these are good things too, um, to leverage. So staff, are highly committed to the success of each student. There's an opportunity for aligned tier one academic and behavioral approaches that limit our need for those um, more specific tier two and tier three interventions. Partners in the district, the region, and the county are excited to support the needs um, of our Mapleton School District and Upriver communities. Um, <coughs> students are proud to attend Mapleton and feel safe and a sense of belonging. They are looking for more challenge and relevance in their courses and for access to opportunities that exist in larger schools. There's a need for systems and capacity to support students with disabilities and students experiencing um, executive function deficits, trauma, stress, and mental health issues, um, and, and supporting them in inclusive settings. Our highest behavioral needs are at transition points, um, pre-K and kinder. Um, and I, what I will say, this plan is K-12 and can't go to pre-K. So while we have a pre-K program on campus, um, all of this plan starts at that transition to kinder. I should have said that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, kinder, um, and then seventh grade, um, and then students experiencing disabilities and navigating poverty and trauma. Um, we have high needs there. Um, chronic absenteeism, our rate is decreasing significantly, um, but remains a priority, and especially with our youngest students working to develop those habits um, early on. Students are asking for post-secondary college and career exposure across seventh through 12th grades, and not just kind of at the end there. Uh, we currently do not have, that should, uh, that should say any, um, dual credit courses, CTE, official CTE um, programs of study for, for pathways um, or world language opportunities. 
There's limited time for ongoing professional development and collaboration among staff. Uh, strong family feedback about Friday school, a want for K-8 inclusion with enrichment opportunities, and the students and families really liked summer school, and so bringing those enrichment opportunities into Fridays. Um, we are currently lacking structures for collaborative decision making and two-way ongoing communication with families. My husband, sorry. <laughs> um, many hands-on engaging experiences in classes. Um, there's an opportunity to align and communicate our curriculum. Uh, we do have limited science opportunities in K-6. Um, and in Division 22, um, in that process, we identified uh, quite a few areas of noncompliance connected to comprehensive school counseling, tag services, and local performance assessments, and laying out our curricular plans. Um, and I've shared all those uh, in prior meetings. Okay. So um, these priorities, you know, there's a lot of needs there, but these kind of emerged as high priority. Um, and these are written a little bit as like things and activities, and you'll see it moves into actual actions. Um, continued, there's a, a priority for continued emphasis on mental health and social emotional learning, um, support for transitions from preschool to kinder, sixth to seventh, and high school to post-secondary, systems of support for special education and other struggling um, students, uh, academic behavior and social emotional, um, and mental health, this should be included there. Um, systems in time for professional learning and collaboration, uh, expanded curricular and extracurricular enrichment opportunities, and aligned and articulated curricular experiences, um, a need for science and health, uh, time on science and health, and um, resources to support that across kinder through sixth grade. Any questions there? Well, what, what about a timeline? Or are um, you just going to engage, a start this process, and just see where it takes you, or do you really have like a, a guidepost? Yeah. So in terms of this plan, so it's a four-year plan. So you do write it pretty high level. And let, let me just go to here so that I can explain oh, this. Okay. So that you, they're written. We have outcomes, strategies, and activities, and the outcomes are like kind of that high level, four to five years. This is where we're working towards. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're very similar to the outcomes, like uh, the bottom three are verbatim, and then the, the top two are, are modified based on work that's already happened um, and is currently happening, but are very similar. Um, but are very similar to, to the outcomes two years ago. Um, so this is based on work that's already been done. Through the SIA, yeah. Right. So when we did that, and I worked closely with Jody mm -hmm. in my last position on this, and so pulled that up, kind of went through those outcomes, and was like, yeah, this is what we're up to still. Um, which is something happened to the internet. Disconnect first. Let me try to disconnect and then reconnect. Um, are kind of in the one one to three year like this is kind of this is an umbrella that we're working under so protecting um, pr providing um, protected st uh, staff collaboration time right and then we don't specify inside of that time what exactly what's happening and there's not this plan doesn't include a PD calendar but that's coming as a result of this plan. <coughs> And then you evaluate it how often? Uh, quarterly. Okay. So it really is a continuous improvement. Quarterly, we, we report, and when we're reporting, we're saying, okay, this is what's happening. Um, these are the strengths. These are the barriers we're facing. Um, and then often the question, so, and then the, the last piece is activities. Those are actually the things we're spending money on. And there's flexibility with that spending as long as it's aligned to the strategies and outcomes. 
if all of a sudden you're like, no, actually, we want to use the money to dig a well, <laughs> right? That's not in the plan. It actually wouldn't fit, but let's say that's what it was. Um, then you can, you ha if it strays from your outcomes and strategies, then you have to have evidence of community engagement that says, actually, this is the highest need right now, and we need to move in this direction because of ABC. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to ODE and say, hey, our community is saying we need to invest in this and make those changes. So a little bit higher lift there. Forget the wealth. Invest in our... No, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, while we're like... Yeah, well, yeah. Just a question because it was helpful that you said, oh, preschool's not included in this sort of plan and stuff. But we do have one, and it'd be great if it was integrated. We do have one, and... It'd be great if it was integrated in all of this, and I think it kind of is implicitly, but it'd be great somehow if we explicitly also... Yeah, that and that's where... Uh, so, like, with the outcomes and strategies, mm -hmm. pre-K can fit those approaches. Mm -hmm. Expenditures, you can't right. spend a dollar no. on them. So that's, hopefully you see it kind of included in here. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, aside from this, like, can we make a parallel sort of plan that doesn't, it's, it's not funding, but it Just aligns Just to say it. this is aligned to, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh -huh. Right, yep. yeah. Because it was, because I was also thinking, like, and it was also helpful to hear you say that, like, like early childhood stuff is not considered a good CP. I don't know, I don't really understand how to say it, but, like, you know, because I, because we actually have it, and we have students who can use that as well, and that's what, so we can it. provide it as a learning option. We can pull some money from it. That was that's one of those like fine line ones where at time they're often going to push you to say yes, early childhood, and can you look at it as more largely? Mm -hmm. And we need educators all across the whole board. Can mm -hmm. you think of it more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. more broadly. Mm -hmm. My computer's needed to restart in the middle okay. of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> this plan and, and you're going to submit it but yeah. then if, so, if something's not working you could address it and, yep. and change it absolutely yeah and there's a it's a four-year plan with a two-year budget and so at two years you'll submit the next two years with an update of a four-year plan and so it keeps you kind of moving forward that way um, but it's very much I, that's my favorite thing about this investment of money is like it's like hey work closely with your community root it in needs and be responsive um, to, to what and the pa pandemic right mm -hmm. we had to shift in all schools and districts we had to shift a lot of money um, and meet needs differently and this allowed the flexibility to do it just because you wrote it wasn't like oh, sorry you didn't know a pandemic this is your fault um, so well, it was in keeping enough options so that if you end up yeah, like know, us not having a counselor, you know, you've got other options to do it. Yeah, and I'll show you there's a tiered, uh, tiered funding model connected to it. We're at 52%. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty moving. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great time for a opportunity to crash. And do you guys want to share something? <laughs> no, we're not. I mean, it might be something that we would all benefit from, or is it, are you talking about a lot? She had travel questions. So. Travel, travel? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, it's not really relevant no, to this conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was, a, it, like, it was a curiosity I had aside in order to make or not make a comment, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe my older This wouldn't have Avid happened if, if she had a, a district computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like 
that's horrible timing. <laughs> Do we want an elementary <laughs> update? If, right. that would, that would be fine. I was going to ask. I was going to ask where our student um, rep was. He. Um, yeah, we. I know the last two months it was basketball related. Right. Um, I have not. I actually haven't heard today. Um, He's just my favorite part of the board meeting. I actually didn't see him at school today. He, I don't oh. know if he's here today. Who's that? Yeah. He's here, or he, he was here. He did something. I saw okay. him. Yeah. I Maybe he didn't put together a report, but you can tell him that, that is we the best miss, part. I, I told the him best the last part two of months the we meeting. miss you. Yeah. Also, track. Mm -hmm. So, and track may have just ended. Maybe he Maybe he's still popping. It's gonna pop in. I don't know. All right. So, Brenda, you want to give us? A, well, we'll just yes. pivot it to our. Um, so for lots of reasons, we haven't had data day this year, but we're going to have data day next Wednesday. And what that means is we hire a couple of subs, to one that floats around and, and relays teachers, the other covers Jocelyn, our title teacher. And we bring teachers in, with they, we look at EZCDM, which is our district um, assessment benchmarking throughout the year. And we bring in um, data, everything from attendance to a little behavioral, a little just different data and we just look at each kid individually. It's one of the huge benefits of a small school. Um, tomorrow I'm really excited. This has been a, several years in the making. Before the pandemic, Janice had wanted to take the little flower bed right outside the elementary office and do a rock garden. Well, um, it didn't happen. It was probably May of, or March of 2020 when she talked about it. So we're doing it tomorrow and Yvette has taken the, the helm for it with it. And kids are gonna, I guess each, like, the blue rocks will represent the river, green for the mountains and stuff, and then the older kids will do, like, rock animals, and then it's gonna fill that rock bed. And since this month's character trait was service to the community, it's kind of a cool community service project where we beautify right there that, that um, unused so flower cool. bed. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be fun. And Yvette, again, sure. took the leadership and um, is excited. It's really That's exciting. We're gonna have cool. all, 95 kids, hopefully weather permitting, outside at tables, right outside the office, um, doing their part. Little guys will just have single color to do the rocks, the other older ones will have a little bit more. Um, we are hiring a first and second grade teacher, because um, as you guys approved in previous uh, meetings, we do, we do have an opening, and we have um, four or five applicants at this point, four, four is what we said. So, um, Sue, um, asked and and I think it's great we're gonna bring in not just she and I and teachers and aides but hold maybe a parent a community member just kind of looking at a well-rounded um, group of people with all different stakeholders and that's gonna be exciting um, I'm excited for Tina to retire she's she's gonna be missed in so many ways but I'll tell you her reading um, teaching is second to none mm -hmm. um, the the progress her kids make that is that is her um, forte for sure. When does the position close? Um, I think it's open till filled, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Open till filled, so it hopefully it'll close in the next week or two because we um, are in the um, filled. Um, we are going to have a walkathon, jogathon, and um, it, we've done this every year at the elementary, I guess. And the money goes towards it, it goes it, the it stays housed at the elementary and just gives some some spending freedom for fun projects, potentially filters and things. Um, but the parent group is going to help us this year, and so um, we haven't figured out the date yet, but um, Abby and et al. are going to potentially join us, and you know, there'll be motivation, maybe handing out water or Gatorade or whatever, but also the thing about doing like the blow up dinosaur, you know, outfits, and kind of chasing the kids, you know, in a fun way to, to run extra miles so they get extra laps or and extra money. And so just, and looking at just making a really fun community event, uh, and I'm excited about that. I can't wait to see the, the outfits you guys come up with. But how does how's the money get raised? Um, so students can either get uh, per lap or per just a, a set fee. If they go out and they ask for um, sponsorship um, and then do depending on how many laps, or like I said, a lot of people just give a flat fee. Um, and then that, so it's 100% profit, um, unless we do some fun you know, prizes or something. I, 
guess I meant how is it going to get telegraphed to the community? Oh, the communication. So it will go out on Remind App, um, and that's where having the parent group help too. That's one of the. There's so many um, things that the, that this group is going to be able to help us with. But one is to get the word out, right? If you get a solid 15 people that are strong on the parent group, they know people and. and yeah, so we're excited about that, and that's going to be in April. Um, we're also going to SpongeBob, um, the the musical, who Crow, and that's also exciting. It looks like our second grade on app will be going in middle school, high school, potentially too. It sounds like, which is I think fun. Awesome. Um, any questions or anything about? Rolling readers went well today. So much we better today. You were really you were on it. <laughs> it was it was much much more organized and there were no adults standing around and the kids were engaged and it's fun it's still one of the coolest things I get to do yeah so our librarian that hasn't been here she wasn't here today um, she is missed so if you listen to this Christina <laughs> mm -hmm. I did it okay today but we need you next week yeah, yeah she does a phenomenal job and so it was um, fun to be part of that. Yeah, well, thank, thanks for stepping up. There are nine. We have nine community volunteers that are rolling readers that meet with um, between three and four kids each. So that's a, a significant portion of our kids, and we target kids for a few reasons. One is just extra reading help, but also just some that are maybe ha are quieter and want to, and we want to see them connect with an adult or a student that maybe just needs another adult to check in on them. It, it's really exciting to see. A lot of retired folks are the ones that are the volunteers work with our youngest population, and it's it's well, it's been going on for twenty some years, and it's yeah. it, it's a good thing. So, oh look, my package is over, and the <laughs> well, plan is ready. Perfect, <laughs> nice <Okay>. timing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So back to outcomes, strategies, and activities. So these are the five outcomes um, that kind of guide all of our work and investment and um, what one thing I'll say like a lot of the improvement doesn't cost money it requires building systems and, and really time and energy are the, the investment right and so and commitment so um, in some of these uh, hopefully you see things that don't cost money they, they take doing <laughs> right and, and that's, that's what money too though yeah exactly yeah. Uh, capacity um, so through, fr through um, professional development and collaboration, student learning experiences aligned to our Mapleton portrait of a graduate, offer comprehensive, relevant, and engaging opportunities that support and empower every student to reach their educational and personal potential. And this was shifted slightly from the previous just to assume that that portrait of a graduate exists by the start of July 1st. So we're April 3rd engagement, continuing through the spring, like there's, we're, we're on track. Um, second one, all Mapleton families are engaged in the development of individualized student learning goals. And so where I said we have, that's our, our biggest gap in engagement right now, like that outcome mm -hmm. is a firm commitment that this is where we're headed. Uh, multiple enrichment and intervention opportunities that support students to reach those goals are provided. Um, number three, all staff implement school-wide and classroom age-appropriate trauma-informed restorative practices, including connecting students and families to services that meet their basic needs. Um, number four, enrichment programming can be linked with positive changes in academic success, attendance, social-emotional well-being, community engagement, and overall school and community climate. And so, like, yes, we're increasing enrichment opportunities, but it's to this end is, is the purpose of that outcome. And then career connected learning opportunities empower students to engage in Mapleton community revitalization efforts. And that um, parenthesis there is to open up uh, flexibility for spending over that cycle, um, that it can include capital improvements and direct support of this aim. Um, the wound, I say that yet? No, next slide. Okay, um, and then the strategies, so the, the one to three year focus, um, what we're up to uh, includes creating safe, respectful, inclusive, and restorative culture that supports the social emotional well being of all students and adults um, that is critical for academic and professional success. And that is uh, verbatim, uh, yep, I believe verbatim from the previous plan. Uh, 
Second one, developing systems. Example, exhibitions of learning, student-led conferences, portfolio development, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, um, for student-led communication of their learning and growth. Um, and that would be in alignment with the um, courtship of graduate. Uh, third, provide weekly professional learning and collaboration time for all educators. We'll come back to that in a second. And then developing uh, programs for post-secondary college, community, and career planning and preparation, um, and specifically starting that at seventh grade and having that embedded across the secondary experience. And then uh, lastly, expanding Friday school to include educationally enriching program for K-12 students. Now, currently that's more academically focused uh, with some enriching uh, opportunities um, for our high schoolers, and so expanding that significantly. Um, that third one, uh, <laughs> so between water day, two snow days, and then low staffing for illness, I kept calling Jaren and saying, do I have to make up this day? Like, what happens if we have to cancel this? Do we, what, what happens? No, you're good on instructional hours. And so on the last one, I was like, why don't we have an hour of early release like other districts if we have this much time available? And I was in a meeting that another small four-day district superintendent was sitting there, and I was like, do you do early release? And he's like, yeah, on Thursdays. And I was like, why don't we do that? <laughs> so I came back, and in the processing with staff towards, towards the finalization of this plan, huge thumbs up from entire staff to say, yes, please, and that the return on investment for that time, are you kidding me, we're not doing this again, mm -hmm. um, would be phenomenal, right? And so uh, we are committing to next year. So, and there's two ways to do that. If you can get enough community partners in to provide some programming for students, we can run our buses at the same time and then pull staff and run it like a, kind of like an after school program. Mm -hmm. um, which would be ideal. Uh, Mackenzie School District has, has done that. They say it's it's hard, right? You gotta get, you have the capacity for that, um, or it can be an early release. And so my the ideal would be the first, and I want to make sure that it's protected time for staff, and we're not getting pulled to cover other things, right? And so uh, I don't have answers on that yet. We're gonna try this again. Um, and. Like, I mean, I, I love the, the Friday school um, expansion stuff and everything. Right now, that's some PD time is Friday days. So would we do Friday school? Would that come in the expense of PD time on Fridays and just be replaced by this? You know? Yeah, so the, the vision there is in part, that one's for sure in partnership with um, other uh, organizations. There's a 21st century state level grant that should release Monday. Um, that I met with um, Vanessa Bus from the Boys and Girls Club about having like a satellite program out here, yeah. and so we're in it. We can have other partners in, inside of that, but we're gonna explore. But we're definitely gonna put in for that grant, mm -hmm. and then working on building other programming opportunities in that, so that it's, it's not our staff providing all enrichment opportunities. We're Got it, leaning yeah. on community and all the things to build. A So then the potential, like Thursday early release or whatever, would be in addition to the time of day. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. And boys and boys and girls club would be staffed by somebody through them, um, or with a grant, or the grant we would hire in somebody for. Yeah. So the grant has to live with us because mm -hmm. of where that funding's available, but it'd right. be in partnership. So, well, to be to be determined. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're waiting for that to release so we can see the see all the requirements before mm -hmm. we get into detail planning. Mm -hmm. so. we, we used to have it here. Remember me? Yeah, the leaf. That's what did the like, fun. Oh, that's yeah, what's leaf. leaf. That's right. Yeah. The twenty first century grant did. Yeah. Cool. We have boys and girls club first. Yeah, before yeah. before leaf, but then boys and girls club decided they were gonna yeah. not do that, and then and then we got the twenty first century grant, which right. which was um, used to support leaf that after school. Yeah. 
super popular. Jaren, what's <laughs> happening? Jaren seems tall. like, look how cool and calm he, does he is over there. He does look very kind of smug about it. I know, he's got <laughs> the wrong This looks like a drug problem, soon. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had this problem until today. Uh, okay, so. I did just, I just <laughs> updated. <laughs> we we watched, smart. we all rated for it. <laughs> So, and then the next slide is uh, our key investments. And so um, there is a budget page that, that you can kind of look through the spending and how it's broken up. It could be overwhelming. Um, but the key investments, um, continuing funding our elementary um, so social emotional learning teacher position. Um, there's a kinder transition program. You'll often hear about KITS, which is a summer mm -hmm. program. There's another one called STARS that happens during the school year, um, at, the, at the beginning of the school year. Um, and I actually was just on a poll and heard about um, a kid's parent version that we just um, can connect families to the program and it's funded separately from the school. Um, and so anyway, uh, promoting, we're gonna invest in the STARS program and then work to connect our families to the kids program outside of uh, summer, or during the summer. Um, and then investment in um, science and eventually math, per well, we're in math adoption. So science and math curriculum and the implementation support for that. Um, at secondary, middle school, high school, um, career and technical education program development. And so that's expanding our farm to table program that has, um, is budding at the middle school um, and uh, expanding that to um, under the umbrella of an agriculture um, CTE program. And the reason for agriculture, uh, one, it's, it's a great pathway, and two, you can fit almost everything under it. Yep. <laughs> so construction, uh, manufacturing, um, arts. Um, Math. Yeah, well, all the core content areas oh, for sure, oh. but even specific, like people are like, we want shop. Mm -hmm. Well, that can go under uh -huh. the agriculture umbrella, and I can just have manage one program versus a bunch of different programs. So That's some great. of this is reducing burden and providing flexibility of one staff member leaves who had expertise in X, we can still continue agriculture, something connected to agriculture with the next one. Um, business is what I was thinking, mm -hmm. can fall under agriculture, um, almost everything. Um, uh, investing in um, gu gu guidance counseling is on here. Um, we have the Gear Up grant, and so some of this is uh, making sure we have the matching funds to continue that grant and put that in place. Um, reading intervention supports um, uh, across grade levels and, and really um, improving our, our support for special education students and struggling students, especially in the um, literacy. Um, and then for all levels, expanding Friday school programming, uh, weekly professional learning time, um, uh, community engagement, continuing community engagement events, improving communication systems with our families, um, and uh, I already said the support, uh, supports for special education and developing data, the use of data um, responsibly. Okay, we're gonna try this one more Is time. Is there transportation slide. with the Friday enrichment? Yep. Yeah, and, and this helps pay for um, transportation, food, oh. staffing, and mm -hmm. uh, like um, uh, contracts with any other organizations that we mm -hmm. pull in. So, my hope is to leverage this money to be the match for anything required for 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, my real hope is that I over budgeted on this and then it opens up money for other things. <laughs> like, um, so you get to do a tiered, um, tiered plan that says, okay, if we can't spend the money on that stuff or we get other funding for that stuff, here's some other things. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, anchor field trips, um, I actually left something off of this, sorry. Anchor field trips, um, which anchor means like, you know, like first graders as part of their curricular experience will always go to X, right? And so developing that to be mm -hmm. curricular. Um, uh, capital improvements to the industrial arts and middle school buildings for expanded CTE and enrichment offerings. Um, and then there should be um, supplies for supporting farm to table, the arts, and. elementary science. Um, so like kind of a supply budget in here that we can pull from as needed and available. Are you um, going off from 
on budget? City, no, uh, yeah, go ahead. Just a super quick question. Like, I see that there's different budget amount, total total activity budget for the 23, 24, and then 24, 25. It's significant difference. Is that like being tied? Why is that? that? Is that because that um, CSI, CSI is not there yeah. for the second year? Okay, so the hardest thing about this integrated funding, so we are a, um, are we CSI or CSI? Target, like we were identified as a school in that could benefit from more support mm -hmm. based on certain pronouns, right? So, yay, more yeah. money. Um, and so, because the feds are changing the distribution of that money, they can't promise us that money in year two. Mm -hmm. So it's on our spreadsheet mm -hmm. for next year. Yeah. We have it funded in there. Mm -hmm. I left those activities in place, but you could, you'll see zeros. Mm -hmm. yep, so yep. see. And that's because we we aren't guaranteed that money in year two, Got it. except we're likely to have that money in year two. We're just waiting on the feds to say, here's here's how that money is being allocated. So there was an email recently that was like, hey, we know that's confusing, but we can't promise you. Yeah. <laughs> yet. So gotcha. that's a good question, good catch. Um, and then similarly, CTE, like, there really is CTE money, it just goes over to the ESD and then we mm -hmm. yeah. benefit that direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think on that one, high or, uh, SIA money goes up, right? Some, you mean not like a significant amount, but from one year to the next. I think that's because yeah. it's split between like 49% and 51%. Oh, gosh, yeah, because yeah. it goes up by, by like, yeah. like yeah. a couple. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that's just how they split. Right, and like we would do with our yep. state budgeting, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, that's funny. I just forgot to take the slide out from when we used it the other day, but I think it's important to um, speak to. So process-wise, recently, um, we pulled uh, a group of st uh, staff representative of kind of all, all parts of the district and um, went through our needs assessment, prioritization, are these the highest needs, um, are these the right outcomes and strategies, and then use the um, questions, especially these four, from the ODE um, equity lens um, tool to kind of say like, hey, what's the impact, what do we expect the impact of these investments, and is there any negative impacts or unintended consequences that collectively we can identify before or need to be attuned to as we move forward. So um, that was one step of this engagement. Um, so this slide, how the state understands success, um, like all investments, were held to these um, five uh, kind of longitudinal measures that include um, four and five year graduation rates, uh, third grade reading scores, regular attendance rates and um, ninth grade on track rates. And then um, there's all the, there's, each of these has more ways to measure success inside of them. I, I am actually a huge fan of the progress markers that are attached to the student investment account because they focus on inputs. It's like, hey, does your district communicate the your approach to literacy and engage parents in that process. Like that seems like a really good measure of success and so it's focused on the input side. Um, mm -hmm. are, you, are you saying you're not really a fan of some of these other? I mean, some, some more so than others. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all, they all give a snapshot of a district um, and I, I, I am of the belief the more local you get in your measures, the more likely you can be responsive to them and I think, in general, right, the, the things we get measured by that usually we're held accountable to, um, and, I, and I use graduation as an example, graduation is the autopsy, right? <laughs> they, they, by the 12th grade, they either did it or they didn't. If they dropped out along the way, you now lost access to do anything about that kid. Mm -hmm. start, start in kindergarten, right? What are we doing now? What do we control? And so um, I'm a big fan of Um, and I don't know, there's lots of things in here. 
Um, the, the part I want to tell you is we do have to set longitudinal um, performance growth targets. I chose not to share them in this particular meeting because you're voting on it and you don't get to vote on those um, targets because they're co-created with, we submit a draft and then co-create them with ODE to say, yes, that sounds good. And then we bring them back and you vote on them. Um, Separately from this. Separate from this. Mm. I will share them to you, but okay. I didn't want it to get confusing that you're not voting on that, but we're just telling you kind of thing. So stay tuned. I will share them to you, just not formally in this presentation. Um, more about these five. This button a lot. I already told you. And then I just, I appreciate this other local metrics may be used to develop applicable performance growth targets. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that we measure and understand success, um, I'm big on organizational measures. One of the um, surveys that I'll use ongoing with staff is input about, do we have a collective vision? Do it, are, do you, are we practicing in our leadership inclusive empowerment? Are we demonstrating a learning culture? Um, do we provide support are we practicing transformative equity? And are we building a trusting community? Um, and I, I care about the answers to that a lot. Um, student, staff, and family, community engagement. Um, I do think attendance is a good sign of district health. Uh, student belonging survey, we've given that and reported on it here uh, last spring and I think this fall. Um, participation in extracurricular events and community input leadership opportunities and then use of a family and community survey. We've, we got that out this year. The partic participation on it is really low, but I want to be able to communicate that to families and say it happens at this time so that blank and then um, find those spots to like, hey, you're here. Can you take this for a second and uh, make that more systematic? Um, student learning outcomes that uh, Mapleton Portrait of Graduate will have the um, learning and skills and attributes that we want to see from our students, and then we will showcase our students and their learning in those spaces. And then ODE progress markers, um, those are currently being revised. Um, I did provide the link if anybody cares to look at those to the, the, the current revisions. Um, and I'm a big fan of those. Of the ODE progress markers? Yeah. Uh, that, like I was saying, they're the inputs. So one example, oh, I, oh. I can show them, but um, like the first one is uh, like we engage in authentic community engagement with all of our stakeholders mm -hmm. and there's it's systematic, okay. and that, right? Like mm -hmm. to me, that's a measure of success. I know those good outcomes on those other measures will happen when I'm doing the things. Mm -hmm. when I say I, when we when collectively are doing mm -hmm. the that lead to success. So, what happens next? We turn this in, <laughs> they review it, and there is a quality education learning panel, panel that um, is members of community all across the state coming together to basically review ODE's review to hold ODE accountable too. So, I, I think it's a cool level of accountability that's kind of two way. Does it have teeth? Uh, I well. We'll find out um, because it, it was supposed to happen in the first round of this and the pandemic hit in April or May, March, whatever. March, March. The, and the plans were due right then. And so all of this yeah. got canceled. So we've never gone through the full, full process. So I'm kind of excited to see it play out. Um, yeah. Questions and comments, and that can be from y'all or anybody in the public too. Clarify the other question. Well, I mean, I don't know, maybe that we have any like I, answer. Yeah, so I guess maybe the question is like when it talk. Well, first of all, it says tribal consultation. We're not required to. Like, why is that? Yeah. So the. I need to cheat for a second. Oh, is it going to be open? Hold on. You one said second. something about numbers Size of, of yeah, our. I can tell you the exact body. thing. That's silly. Oh, not. it's in there. Seems like that wouldn't determine whether you. Of course it wouldn't. 
So if you are if you are a district that receives greater than forty thousand dollars in Title VI funding or have fifty percent or more American Indian Alaska Native students, you are required to consult with your tribal um, government. And so right. that level of funding and or population right. um, sets in place a requirement for government to government right. like process more formal processes. I guess right. we're not technically government, but. Um, and really ODE honest. has tools to like support that process. Um, and so uh, it, like when I talk to, well Mona's not at the state anymore, but Mona led that work for a long time and she talks about big C consultation and little C consultation mm -hmm. and um, little C consultation is building relationships and being in good community and um, working together in relationship to, to lead your district and in part, right, in partnership, Big C is like, hey, right. come to the table, practice these, document in this way, make sure everybody's got signed agreements and those kind of things. Yeah. So then the second part to that question then would be for that consultation, is it based on the tribal members or tribal identifying kids that are at the school or is it based on the ancestral homeland your school is on? It's, um, once you're required for tribal consultation, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It is the, like, I so it's a good question, well, without getting into other districts' business, like, uh, done correctly, it should be in consultation with the lands that you're on, like, okay. the tribal lands that you're on. In Lane County, that gets, um, it's messy. it gets mm -hmm. messy and mm -hmm. big because it's five, Four, four or five tribes, depending on where you're at. Exactly. And so getting to formal consultation, that, that's why there's so many supports in place for districts to mm -hmm. do this. Um, yeah. So I've, I've helped districts connect to people. I've never been in a formal consultation process. So. But we are in but we are built in community. Exactly. It's small, I am 100% committed to small C consultation and, and co collaborate, not even consultation, collaboration, whatever the right word is there. Yeah, well, thanks for bringing it up. It yeah. needs to be said. Any other questions for Sue around this? You're sitting on all kinds of thoughts, aren't you, over there, guys? <laughs> Abby? <laughs> I did have one other uh, question, um, just because I didn't, I scanned this and then I like was really deep into it, but I didn't get all the way through. Um, but for the, you mentioned the chronic absenteeism, it's getting better, but it's kind of um, a bit of an issue maybe in the younger grades. So is that, is that plan then for, is that, a, is that where that family engagement piece is going to, because kids not coming to school usually means they're missing the bus or their families yep. aren't bringing them or whatever that reason is and so is that where that that's yeah so there's uh, so so I think it, it'll play out in multiple ways like there, there's a lot of best practices for improving oh. attendance but especially at the younger grades like um, that family connection to say like hey and, it, and they call it everyday matters because that's yeah. literally the message you're trying to convey is um, every day at school makes a huge difference, especially in those early years because mm -hmm. you're building those, that kind of stamina and practice of being here all the time and building community and getting those foundational skills. Um, so very much connected to that outcome number two. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank yeah. you. I just know, I just no, you mentioned it, and I didn't hear where the like that solution was coming from. So thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when we say individualized student learning goals, like, you, and the big message about attendance is like, you you don't <laughs> learn if you're not here. You don't learn from us if you're not here. You you learn some something somewhere, but not in the right experiences and foundational setting that we are providing. So I guess I have more. So I yeah. just want to make sure 
in um, something in the um, guidance that specifically they use a term, and um, I, th I think it's a good definition of it. It's called. Um, hold on a second, so I can get it correct. Targeted universalism. Universal. Tar tar shoot. Targeted. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I said it backwards. Targeted universalism, I think, is, is the way to say it. It's been a while since I had to talk about that. Um, and um, it's, hey, where we identify gaps, right? And I'm, I'm going to speak to our special education sports for special education students. That's come up in every setting. Like, hey, we've got students who are falling through the cracks. We don't have, it, it, you know, we need to improve our systems and supports. Um, when we do that, especially when we use, when it talks about tier one systems and starting with practices that support tier one means all students, right? And we're gonna put the lens and say, okay, when we make this change, does it meet the needs of our special education students? Yes. Is it also good for every student in there? Yes. Awesome, this is the right move um, versus we're going to take this investment and say, okay, students, um, special education students, come over here. Here's all of our energy. Here's all of our supports. Students over there, if you're not one of these categories, good luck. We're, we're spending money over here. So that that's the, um, so kind of two parts there. It's um, with a lens, and that, that's why they say focus, right? With, with a planning focus on these groups, but in support of bettering the experience for all students. And then um, second, when we talk about tiered supports and inclusive learning environments, right? Um, we want to build the best learning experiences for every single student. And we've we talked a lot, a lot, a lot um, of input, I would say for community and specifically staff. We are so small that we should be able to meet the individualized needs of every single student in our in our district. And so, yes, the, the planning and the processing and making sure that we're not further marginalizing these students plays out, but that's not at the expense of any student in our district. So I, I appreciate you saying that. I'm sorry, I couldn't get the term right there. <laughs> well, I would love to say uh, at 7.15, we are 15 minutes over and our guests were going to speak, but we still have yet to... Um, That's why I didn't rush. <laughs> Thanks, well, I, I got a text from Andrea, and who is... The, the game is running long. She, well, she is not going to be able to be here at 7 since the past 7. Yeah, I got a text from her, too. She yeah. just said she's driving, but did she say when she will be here? Um, it's 35 minutes, so it's going to be like 7.45, probably. Well, and she is willing to zoom in, but I don't think we have that set up, right? Like an option for that. Well, she's driving. How can she zoom and drive? Well, she can stop, and because you can zoom on your phone, as long as you have service. Right. Yeah. So I'll I'll see. Okay. Um, because. Um, let's see, what can we backfill while you're seeing? Well, I can, I can do a district report. All right, go for um, it. Are you guys cool? So a couple. You bet. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I want to come back, too, so there. <laughs> Michelle will buy dinner tonight. Stay sure. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that works. Um, I can do, quit, and I will say, I'm less prepared for middle school, high school report because I had a few things going. Um, but uh, a couple of different things, I guess just district-wide, obviously um, school closures. I just wanna make sure everybody knows we will not have to make up those days because we still need instructional hours. As long as we don't have any more Cancel days. anything else here. <laughs> uh, I haven't asked them how many, every time I'm just like, how much more? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the plan is no more cancellations and then it stops snowing. Um, I mean, does it make sense to have, like just add in a day rather than have these, all this buffer of time that we've accumulated? Ask me that again. Okay, well it just seems like, you know, like you're talking about early release. Yeah. Like, well, you know, it sounds like we probably should have been doing that all along 
Is that correct? We should have been, had early release for the last, since we've been become a four, four day school. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. Sometimes instructional hours might uh, rule. I don't. I haven't watched those rules carefully to see if they they do allow for like counting up to thirty hours of professional learning and um, a conference conference time with. So and I, those may have been added over time. I don't. I don't know the history of that. Um, I think what you're asking is like if we um, if we add, if we provide that early release, do we not have a buffer right. for those days? Um, Kenzie hasn't had to make up days either, and right. that's who I've been. <laughs> I was oh, like, okay. "Where are you at?" And they have snow, and they have, they, you know, things come up. So um, we should have that buffer in there. We have the well drilled so that we won't have to have water days. Right. Um, like I think we're building our resilience, and really, it should just be. I mean, and, and if we're understaffed at different times, that I mean, that's just reality sometimes. Right. Um, but. I think we will still have both. And it, when we make the calendar, um, one thing I want to make sure we do is um, mark a couple days in there that are like, hey, if we have to make up a day, it will be that one, so that we're not having to decide that later. Um, we know, hold this date just in case mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. Like it's so been Fridays in the past. I, like we've added Fridays. I think yeah. Fridays would be the yeah. way to do it versus mm -hmm. extending the school year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, I know there's tons and tons of considerations, but like, I don't know, I think having kids be as, as we, you know, we have heard and, you know, from that feedback, there's a lot of interest in having kids have opportunity to be on and be here and stuff. So, like, having fewer hours of student time is not ideal in my mind. So, like, I like the fact that we're adding more Friday stuff yeah. um, and taking, you know, and taking extra that specific time. I just wouldn't want to see us kind of try and pare it down as much yep. as possible. Yep. Yeah. yeah, my hope is that Fridays are like, kind of feel like another school day in terms of attendance, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're getting a lot of kids here doing a lot of different things. And I still, I, I want to, even if it takes another year, I really want to have a model that Thursdays, I, I don't even know that it's going to be Thursdays, just to make it clear here, but on whatever day of early release, um, staff have time to come together and kids do something super cool, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, the well is, uh, that probably comes later, but I'm just going to tell you. Um, making progress on that, we are about to get it set. We're waiting. Let's see. We're about to get final steps so that we can run it for a week straight and then send samples out for testing. So it should be up and running shortly. Randy, like if you if you want to see Randy excited, ask her about the well. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I have other things. What are we doing? Um, just in terms of middle school, high school, um, I don't think I've updated here. We did our second full PD day with um, uh, Lane ESD staff coming out, and uh, we did three rotations and then some whole group activities in the gym um, on um, brain science, uh, uh, like body literacy in terms of like um, they did like pulse oximeters and breathing exercises and mm -hmm. saw the impact of um, breathing on calming. I will tell you, middle schoolers love to learn so cool to hear their <laughs> feedback and be like, whoa, did you know? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I did, and it's cool that you know. <laughs> so, um, and then awesome. uh, building capacity to, like, learning about each other and um, ways to support each other. And so, uh, just really cool. Can you uh, hear me? We had a session yeah. on yep. building yeah. systems. Oh. Yes, I can uh, hear you now. Stu student and youth ideas, actually, Some of that feedback is in this plan, and some of it is informing our planning for next year. So, awesome. um, Andrea's here. I, I can stop got, my yeah, recording. Let's, let's, yep. um, let's turn it over to our guests. Hey, Andrea, welcome to uh, the board meeting. I don't know, can she hear us? Can you hear Michelle? You're muted. 
doing that. Okay. Okay. Now, so, can you hear me? Yeah, and you can you can hear us, yeah. And I can hear you. Okay, I can't so, hear anything else. Cool. Well, you can mute yourself anytime you want because we're going to turn it over to our uh, illustrious guests here, uh, Jonathan Light. You all met from. Oh, Spring. I kind of heard her there. What happened? She's not hearing you very well. Um, I don't know. How, we'll just do the best I we can. Myself, so. Well, I mean, she's not coming. She's here. She's here on Zoom. Okay. And if, so. you're, if you're over here near the computer, yeah, maybe I, I can move the present from where Jaren's up. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe when you guys present, maybe you could stand up closer over here. Um, yeah, you met Jonathan uh, Light. He's a school board member from uh, from Springfield and also a former teacher at Pleasant Hill. And then there's Roscoe Caron, who's um, a teacher, a former teacher at, J which one? Uh, Two, started three. Started in a, a Junction City, but a, a couple of middle schools in Eugene. All right, middle school yes. teacher. And also, you represent uh, some, uh, what are you in your other capacity? I, I work with the Community Alliance for Public Education and the Oregon Public Education Network. Both of those are all volunteer groups, mostly retired teachers. We've been working on questioning the model that has been in place for the last 20 years, testing and data collecting, kind of being the foundation of much of what goes on in classrooms. Okay, so which one of you wants to go first? I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. I could have yeah, had a better time. He's going to say age before beauty. Uh -huh, for sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll speak over here. Yeah, uh, sure. So, uh, yeah, it, it's great to be here. So you did, you did a great job presenting. Yes, and good to see you. thank you to the board members for putting in all the hours that you put in. Um, uh, so, first off, I, I planted many, 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 many thousands of trees in the Mapleton Ranger District in the <laughs> 70s and early 80s. And then I had the great good fortune of working with Michelle at a restaurant for a couple of years. So, <laughs> some connections. Uh, I know that you've had a lot of discussions about standardized testing, and, and I want to thank you for doing that, because those are discussions that I think should be happening much more in many more school boards across the state, and that really doesn't happen that often. And um, so I speak with a lot of legislators, and I'm going to guess 90 meetings in the last three legislative sessions on issues around standardized testing for the most part. And I can tell you that Democrat, Republican, House, Senate, you're going to find very, very, very few uh, uh, fans of the standardized testing system. But then people don't know, well, what do we do about it? And everything just becomes paralyzed. And the system continues and continues. So, my, my sense is that we took a wrong path about 20 years ago, and we made much of learning about testing and data collection, and it seems as though there's never enough tests and there's never enough d data, and how many things are not happening in our classrooms that could be happening instead of doing that. I believe that, that te teachers invented testing. Teachers know how to do assessment, but we've turned it all over to these giant corporations uh, and they've taken many, many millions of dollars from the taxpayers in this state and across the U.S. And I'm not sure there's anything to show for it except, I would say, a litany of damage. The, the relentless tracking and sorting of students, marginalizing teachers in their own classrooms. Uh, I, I, I just think where we've been is wrong and we don't seem to be able to get off of the path we've been on. And the fact that uh, you've had discussions about pushing back against this system, first off, I applaud you for your courage because a lot of people can get to the point where they say the testing is wrong, but they're afraid that they're going to be labeled as, you know, either coddling teachers or they don't want students to learn or they don't want accountability or all those things. And so they, they feel that it's wrong, but they, they, they're, like I said, they're paralyzed. Uh, I, I worked on the opt-out bill in 2015 with uh, Senator Lou Frederick, African-American, uh, East Portland, former primary school teacher, oceanographer. He's a hero uh, to me. Uh, I worked on the, uh, uh, the trying to challenge some of the aspects of the Oregon kindergarten and readiness test, which I thought was, uh, many people felt was excessive, and it is being uh, revamped. 
Uh, and then uh, challenging the graduation requirement, the essential skills testing requirement, which did uh, uh, happen. It's on a two-year pause right now. Um, uh, with Representative Nathanson on, on uh, how much are we spending on locally mandated testing, easy CBM or iReady or MAP? The taxpayers have no idea. Parents have no idea. Uh, how. So Nancy Nathanson said, well, let's find out. We, we deserve to know. And so that is going to be, you'll be doing an audit here in, uh, in another year on, on those costs. Uh, so here's what we know. The, this system is not working, and people are voting with their feet. So Mapleton's uh, uh, participation rate last year was 68% on Smarter Balance, right? And in the entire state, it's 81 84%, depending on the subject. The federal government says you gotta have 95% participation, 94.5%, but let's say 95, in order for all the, the data to be considered valid. So all of the testing that goes on in Oregon is worthless. Yeah. The federal government doesn't even give it credibility, so what are, what are we doing? Um, so, uh, Here's what we also know, and, and because I, I'm, I'm in communication with a number of national groups, there's not one district in one state one time that has been financially punished for opting out of tests. New York State, it's around 600,000 now, students not taking the, the, the yearly spring summative test. So there's this fear out there, and I, I applaud you for even considering pushing back, because I think I, somebody's got to take the lead, right? And, and, and so I don't know what, what decision you're going to make, but I, 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 I sincerely thank you for even considering it. Uh, I think that things will change when enough people say the emperor has no clothes. This system is crazy. It does a lot of damage. It wastes taxpayers' money. And let's just stop doing it. Let's let go of the tug-of-war rope. We don't want to play anymore. And so, uh, lastly, it, there really are ethical considerations. There really is harm being done. In my estimation, I'm not alone. Uh, and, and I think at, at some point it's like, what is our ethical responsibility as educators? And um, it's a big, big question. But thanks for giving me time to, to speak. Thanks, Roscoe. Some of you remember Jonathan. I probably you, Mizu, remember when Jonathan came and spoke to us once. Mm -hmm. As you're going to say, it's a yeah. little bit of deja vu because yeah. I was here eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, similar uh, circumstance. We're talking about uh, that Springfield had just passed or adopted a letter to parents saying, urging them to please opt their children out of the standardized testing. Um, it's an interesting parallel. I've been on the board now 18 years, and my, when I first got on the board, it was right when this testing thing was proposed. And I was skeptical to begin with, because anytime the feds get involved, it doesn't always work out, despite all the, the rhetoric around best practice and all that. So, uh, was on the board, but I've been involved with the Springfield District since 1991, when I uh, moved back to the area. At that time I was in business, so I was on various groups in the district, long range uh, planning and all of that. So I have sort of a long track record of, of being involved in education, and of course as a teacher also. So, um, yeah, Roscoe made the point of why do we keep doing this? You know, it's a 23 year run of, of this testing thing, and the data just doesn't support that it's working. If you look at the, the one test, the NAEP test, N-A-E-P, uh, it's generally pretty accepted uh, nationally as, as a marker or a metric, and our scores have stayed the same since they started the test in 1999 and 2000, 2001. So we're spending a lot of money. Uh, I believe we're damaging a lot of kids for something that really doesn't inform education. And, and even ODE admits it's, it's not designed for that. It's designed to sort of rank schools and districts and states, and that was the promise coming into it. But it's done so differently between states and districts and particip participation rates that uh, you, there really isn't much that uh, we can do with that. In fact, I just met
met with the uh, assessment team in Springfield last week, um, the answers I got didn't didn't convince me that we're using these in any kind of a, a valid way that really dials in the individual student. You know, we're talking about personalized learning. Well, to me, that's all about the individual. Why do a test that's designed to get data that's never going to be useful for the kid, right? Spend a lot of money. To me, money's one thing. The worst thing is there's not enough time with the kids now, so why are we running them through this rigmarole on something that, that isn't even statistically valid? Mm -hmm. So, quickly, on, you know, in 2014, prior to the opt-out legislation that was passed, I proposed a moratorium, one-year moratorium in Springfield on testing, where we wouldn't get the test, but we would look at alternative assessments, because I'm very pro-assessment. I want to make sure we know where our kids are at. Um, didn't quite have the support there, so it, it wasn't accepted by the board. Then the following year, the legislature's passed House Bill 2655, which gave us the option of opting students out for any reason. We could do it before, but it had fit some narrow categories. And so a couple months after that is when I, I proposed the opt-out letter to parents saying, go ahead and opt out, and we had the forms and all that kind of stuff. So that's when I was invited over here to be able to talk about that. Um, here was the reaction from ODE. First of all, they said, well, we're, we're not going to give you any money then. You know, if, if you're not going to participate, we don't have to give you money, we won't. Um, and then they sent down a team of ODE uh, people to present to our board on how this test was really going to be good for kids and, and uh, give it a chance. The other part of the conversation was, hey, Oregon is working on an alternative assessment. It turned out it's called the new path or a new path. Um, but it was sort of caught up in all of the political stuff when Kitzhaber ended up having to resign and they basically shelved it and, and the money dried up for working on that. So here we are today, eight years later, and it's still the, the same thing. So from a board perspective, why do we need Mapleton? We need your courage. We need somebody to say, this is not working. And if the, and you know, uh, if ODU and the state wanted to push back, oh, that, that would be like page one news, you know, as far as Little Mapleton. To me, you're sort of the mouse that roared, you know, willing to say the emperor wears no clothes, and we can no longer allow our kids to, their education to be less than it can be. And I think we're spending all this time focusing on something that's ineffective and that is a waste of taxpayer money. Should we continue to do it? That really is the question. In addition to just the money and, and the time of students, so as a music teacher, I can tell you how, how it really impacts anything other than being tested. You know, so it's really all about language arts and math. And so I had kids pull out of my uh, elementary music class to do these tests, and you know, which they didn't want. Um, it's just everything else diminishes in value educationally. CTE classes that you, you were talking about, it's all about the test. And hey, I, if it's all about the test, then it should be all about the results. So again, I, I admire the courage of Mapleton. I love small schools. Pleasant Hill is where I taught. It's a small district. So, uh, but as a board member, I, you know, I really feel it incumbent upon me as a board member to keep pushing what's best for kids. So I do it in my own district. It's a different board than what I was on uh, before, um, but I will continue to push for things that I think are going to be good for kids. So I wanted uh, to allow enough time if there's any questions also for Joshua or um, myself. Well, I have a couple of questions and, uh, because I know there are other schools that are, um, they're not in Oregon necessarily, or maybe they are in Oregon. I think there's something in Ashland. Um, but there's the New York, uh, con what is that? There the New York Consortium. The New York Consortium. The New York Performance Consortium that's in its 25th year. Uh, 38 schools in New York, all demographics across the city. And it's all about showing what you know. It's, it's, it's based on what the students learn and how they can demonstrate what they know. And they've been granted.
granted exception from the New York State Regents exams, which are uh, essentially like smarter balance, uh, because it's such a, a fine example. And uh, the graduation rates for students, uh, the students who go on to a variety of, of colleges, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It just makes school a, a fun place to be and, and, and a place where students are proud of the learning that they're doing. Ashland Middle School is the gold standard right now in Oregon. And uh, we're working with uh, Kelly Middle School in Eugene and Ashland Middle School. They, they do a similar thing. I, I won't go into detail, but there are better ways to do it. It's just we've got to, like, I'll be honest, if we wait for the ODE, we're going to be waiting another 20 years. Yeah. They're, just, they're just not. <laughs> The, the, the uh, report that Jonathan mentioned was, was the, the, the best standard in the United States. Uh, uh, with the Department of Education at that time, the governor's, I can't remember what it was called, uh, uh, education was Nancy Golden, and, uh, and, and the uh, Oregon Education Association. They spent two years coming up with a whole better, healthier way to do assessment. This the is the new, the new path? is not there. And the pressure from the testing corporations is, is powerful. Are you talking about the new path? The new path. Yeah. There's a national model. And there's really, you know, I scratch my head as to why they're gain, getting their data the way they're doing it, which is from the top down. Because there are other ways to give formative assessments and interim assessments and extrapolate the data, the big picture stuff, if they really want to. But the fact that they spend all of our money and all of our students' time and staff time on a test that they're not really using, this is not as advertised. When they came out with this, uh, you know, we were going to be able to just compare Massachusetts to Idaho to, you know, Florida, whatever. They don't use it. They really don't use it. And, and uh, it feels like our kids are guinea pigs for something that doesn't make sense. What are the other forms? Well, they call it the, the balance assessment, three-legged stool, uh, formative, interim, and summative. Uh, smarter balanced than those, I call them sort of post-mortem tests, or sort of after the fact. That data is not used for individual students, those have already moved on. So for me, the most valuable tests are the formative, the daily, in the classrooms, whatever the classroom teacher is doing. The interim also has value, uh, but uh, it's sort of a snapshot in time, so you sort of see what the progress is over the longer period of time. Um, so when they present it as a three-legged stool, it's like, you know, your summative test is a log, and then the other things are pencils, you know. And uh, I think it should be the other way around. So everything is geared to helping the student improve their education, and what can we do there? And the summative testing, you know, there's a, I guess there must be a limited amount of, of funding, but, and we don't want to test our kids all the time or they are not be learning, but I prefer to start at the kid level and move up. And, then, uh, yeah. and, and really, Sue knows a lot about this. <laughs> they, uh, other models. I, I'll say they're included in formative, but I think separate is performance assessment, and there's um, there's a requirement that we have curriculum embedded performance assessments, and we're, that's one of the spaces that we're out of compliance and will uh, not be out of compliance moving forward. Um, we're, we're working towards that, but um, just get, tying back to the SIA plan uh, to make a connection on assessment is when we talk about the Mapleton portrait of a graduate <coughs> and then having these curricular experiences and showcasing student learning. So like when you go to sports fair, you see demonstration of student work and student learning. Um, you can extend that further and have, and, and I think Sporza has looked like this and we'll, we're working towards this, have the student there. And we had elements of this actually there that night, but all of the students there and showcasing their learning and here, here's my work product. Here's the things that I've learned in this, and, and they're practicing those presentation skills. Um, and then alongside that can be, um, and should be, development of a portfolio of best work with reflection um, built into that process. 
process, and then um, I lost my train of thought. But one other, there's other. Oh, and then um, specifically at transition points, uh, almost like a defense that, um, like I, I have demonstrated the mm -hmm. capacities and that I'm supposed to competencies um, and at these attributes in this Mabel's and Fortune of a Graduate um, at the level of eighth grade. I'm ready for high school, <laughs> right? And you're, and it's an authentic audience of like your family and other community members to be like, hey, I rocked eighth grade. I can't wait for high school, kind of kind of thing. And uh, my guess, I'm not familiar with the New York Performance Consortium, but my guess is the schools that are part of that. These are the practices in mm -hmm. place that are. Um, you can point and say, <clears throat> of course, our third graders can read. Look at what else they can do, kind of, kind of thing. So, yeah, there was a kid who, uh, like, explained the whole filtration system. Yeah, yeah. our seniors. Like, yeah, did. I told as a teacher, and we're yeah. sitting yeah. right there, and I'm like, okay, no better way to like show that you know something. Oh my gosh, teach somebody yeah. some something that I knew nothing. So that's exactly like yeah. that's an, an authentic demonstration of learning and assessment that's like clearly you understood the science mm -hmm. and you could communicate the science in a way that used your literacy skills to communicate that mm -hmm. to a broader audience. Well, so exactly yeah. exactly. And it's so a hallmark of a of a community school. Yeah. I mean that you know, you're a parent and you're being schooled by a student care. It's like this is good. <laughs> Springfield's highest performing school is our charter school, the Academy of Arts and Academics. And they're, they're just blowing the doors off. Project-based learning exactly and student-presented performance. Yeah. You know, So the, the families and the student are integrally involved in this, and they take ownership of it. And it's sort of sort of odd. When we started the arts, in, uh, A3, we, we call it, when we started the school, it was to learn from a small school experience what could we do that we could then put out to our comprehensives. But as a district, uh, we don't do that. They, we just sort of have them off to the side, which I think it, it just blows my mind. It's like, what? Uh, but uh, there are other ways to do assessment that are much more meaningful and engaging with the student. And then it's not the race is wrong. You could tell he felt proud to be like, explain it all. You know? so, oh, yeah. Yeah. And A3 routinely does that. They have this confluence, and you go around, and, and I, I always make a point to go, and they have tables set up for three or four students. And, uh, and those that don't quite have it yet, they, they know it coming out of that, because they, they can see their peers and how they're presented and the materials that they, they put together. So it's a very meaningful experience. And when you talk to those kids and ask them, oh, do you enjoy going to school there? Oh, yeah. You know, they're really, really well, yeah, I think it teaches, you know, how to talk to adults and how to present rather than just, you know. Did you have something, Mary? I just, yeah, I wanted to, I had a question about Ashland and Kelly Middle School. So are, you were saying that they have, like, these other benchmarks in place, and mm -hmm. um, so do, do they not require testing also, or do they still, because it sound, you made it sound like that we would be like the first district to like really push back, but then you're kind of saying that Ashland and Kelly are already doing it, or I just wanted clarification. I think Roscoe is most familiar with that, with the Ashland model. Uh, Ashland just uh, blows my socks off, what they're doing there. They're, they're in their ninth year, and uh, it is uh, it is entirely proficiency based, and without going into a lot of details, the teachers. What one of the things we most want our students to learn, and we feel are the most important for them as fifth graders, let's say, or sixth, sixth graders, it's no school, um, and then they gear their they, they they derive their lessons based on on those that focus and those proficiencies that they would need to show that they, they, they got it, that they learned that. They completely revamp their assessment then, so it's much more like A3 or the New York Consortium. It's based on showing what you know, demonstrating that you, wh whether it's writing or, or whatever the, the, the subject is. Then they revamped their report cards completely. 
And they say, we no longer have students who come to the teacher and say, what do I have to do to get a B? They can identify specifically what things they're proficient in, which things they are beyond proficient in, and which things they're not proficient at at this moment. And that report card is easy for people, the, the parents to read, to say, oh, okay, you need to do more work on uh, introductory paragraphs and, and uh, expository writing, you know, and, 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 and the kids have a chance to do it again. So that right now we're in a deficit model. It's identifying kids failing, 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 not meeting the benchmark, the cut score, failing, failing. This is a whole other way of doing so it. I understand that. I guess my question is specifically they, no, is, they, are they- giving the test. They are giving so the So they test. are still giving the test. They are. So and if- it, are, it, Oh, I'm sorry. So, so, okay, I think, so I think where my mind is at, and I just kind of, it's just, so they have this, these other, this other plan that's showing, like it sounds like in their ninth year or whatever, there's, there, this is successful. In New York, this is, there's a model that's successful. But, um, so, I, so I, cause the, the courage, like I think, I mean, there's not a lot of convincing you have to do for, I think, for us. But, we're, I mean, the fact that we even want to talk about it, and um, I think what we want to do is identify that other solution. And so, like, it sounds like that there's some places that that might be happening, but they they still haven't like made that leap. Um, and so, is like, what's the plan of action? Like, is Ashland going to go to the state and say we're no longer going to require this because we have this instead like is having that plan in place like really the catalyst or is just a school saying we're not doing this anymore the catalyst do you do you understand really I what do. i'm asking your question is excellent uh ashland has a pretty high opt-out rate and so we the teachers and the administrators really don't care about preparing for the smarter balance tests and they've actually done tracking of this, the, the, those who take the Smart Analysis test and, and uh, where the students meet on proficiency. And uh, so that there's a pretty tight correlation. And they've done that because they want to, at some point, show the state of Oregon, look, we're getting everything that matches any results of any test you can have. We don't want to take the test anymore. Mm -hmm. So you could say that their approach to the test is benign neglect. It doesn't get in the way of their teaching. But they're still, they're still getting the money. The yeah, money that's the thing. That's the piece. That's really what it comes down to, right? It's the well, money. I mean, and I mean, the money that we're still paying the, mm -hmm. for these tests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in New York, they are not giving the test. They, they don't give the test. And they right? also have been, uh, they're, they're not required to. No. Or they've been given they, a waiver. They've given yeah. correct, them a waiver. And, yeah. and I, I think the difference is, is every district is, so they're benign neglect, right? But they're mm -hmm. still paying for the test. Right. Yeah. They're still giving the test. Springfield, same situation. We've got about 85%, 80% opting out, but we're still paying for the test. We're still giving the test. It's still driving curriculum. The difference is, I think what you're proposing is an opt-in, okay? So opt-out, House Bill 2655 covers districts who opt out. But it doesn't cover districts who opt in. So it's sort of like me saying prior to House Bill 2655, well, we don't want our, our parents to do it. And then, oh my gosh, the world is going to fall apart. We're going to have withhold funding and all that. It turned out to be sort of a, a hollow threat, uh, but it was enough to get the district's attention. So, which happened to us? It got our attention as well, and mm -hmm. we backed out. So we're revisiting it because some of us feel it's still. A ridiculous waste of time. What else could we be doing at this district if we weren't doing this? And what else? Where else would the money go? And from a larger district standpoint, I think it would empower other districts, other boards, to make that same decision. Say, I'm not already. You know, if if people aren't taking the test and the state needs the data, they're going to come up with something. I mean, pull pull a, the new path off the shelf, dust it off adopt other models that are out there, but quit doing the same old thing knowing it's not working. And for whatever reason, 
the larger districts have not found the courage to step up and say, enough already. And so without without us doing that, we're not we are not making we're not giving a chance at something else. So, it, like if so, if Ashland is like I like the idea that they've been doing this other thing and sh and trying to show that it's working better than you know testing for assessment. And it sounds to me like New York probably did that too, but it was probably a consortium of powerful schools, of big schools that did it. And that's probably why they got the exception, is because they were able to say, here's our plan, here's what we're gonna do, and we band, they banded together, so there was enough of them. So, I mean, is there a path for us to do that with Ashland and with Kelly Middle School and with whoever other schools and come up with a plan that you know shows that with an eventual path to saying, okay, we've showed enough, now we're all not doing this together, and we'd like a waiver. You know, because that seems like, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of hearing a potential path for collective action that way. I'm going down to Ashland on March 22nd, and if any of you want to go, spend the day there and just and just learn. They're, they're, they're incredibly gracious. They say, bring as many people as you want, we'll, we'll show you what we got. And I've been in, conference or Zoom meetings, I've seen two presentations. The Kelly Middle School has not, uh, staff has not voted yet whether they want to do this, but they did have a presentation uh, two weeks ago. Um, so th the sense is, uh, again, it's got, the change is going to have to come from the ground up. So, so the work I've been doing for, for 10 years, what we say is oppose and propose, oppose and propose. Oppose the harmful system and propose a healthier way to do it. And so uh, when we came to learn about Ashland about a year and a half ago, why is it a secret? I don't know. Why isn't it being lauded at, at the state? I, I can't tell you, but it's really, really good. And I'm sincere in the offer to uh, include any of you. Well, I mean, yeah, like I don't think we have to be convinced. Like I, I heard a lot of elements of that same thing in Sue's presentation today, you know, about the importance and the, and the the sort of the style of assessment that goes along with the integrated plan that we were presented. So I don't think that, like I, I don't, yeah, like I mean I'd love to, to go see their system and how they actually implement it and that would be really useful. But I don't, I don't think I need to go there to be convinced about that. I guess I'm coming at it from a different perspective or, or trying to think about if we were to really try and, like we have tried to make a, bit a difference in this, but if we want to take another step in that direction, that a way, a way of organizing with other schools, like-minded schools, and having a real clear path towards making that change is, is a way that I like to consider. That's something I'm interested in. And what I can tell you is that uh, uh, in the last week I've been in conversations with two Eugene school board members who uh, want to hear about any decision you might make tonight. So I mean, I think we could be catalytic. You know, by making this decision, I would prefer to have 10 other districts with us right now, but that's not what's happening. We presented at the Oregon School Board Association and we got buku kudos for what we're talking about and a whole lot of support. Feel the same way. Um, you know, they weren't entire boards. They were people who came, represented their boards, and they want us to come and talk to their boards and they want, you know, the work is, uh, is happening. But, I mean, it would be a whole lot stronger if we walked into um, a school board and said, we're, we said no. We said no, and we will, we will, we will um, administer the test to any kid who comes in with an opt-in form. Fantastic, you, we, we're not saying we won't administer it, but we're actually saying no, we think there's a better way, and we're gonna do it. So, I mean, I, you know, my, my hope is that that's Mapleton, that we would, we would do this. And <clears throat> toward this end, um, actually, Mary Ellen revamped the, that first um, <clears throat> statement. I'm trying to get a copy of it. But she didn't, she didn't really like um, the tone of the, <clears throat> the introductory statement, which said that we find it inappropriate. And um, she said, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that she felt like it would be better to say something like, we've been studying it, and therefore, all of the things, and therefore, let's vote to stop. So that, you know, I mean, it's really 
but it was it made her comfortable with it, and she's not here because she's dealing with stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just have, like you, you go because I just talked. No, I feel like you're like go ahead. On, on <laughs> first. Yeah. No, I I just I wasn't. Yeah. I I maybe I wasn't. Maybe I'm not clear, or maybe this isn't the place to have that part of the discussion. But. I wasn't really speaking to the resolution. I was speaking oh. more to a path forward for us as a way, because I don't want to just say, no, we're not going to do this. I want to have another plan. I want to say, why another plan? You know, like, mm -hmm. and, and having other, and and I, I think we can, we can develop that on our own, or we can benefit by, you know, talking with other districts and saying, hey, this is, what are you doing? Great, that looks good now. We, that doesn't work for us, you know. And like, but also, working with, hopefully, having a, a larger presence than just our own, in saying, great, we we have a system that works better, and we, we're saying no because we want to do this instead. But we do have that system. I mean, we already do have that system here. We just would eradicate one aspect of it, which we don't support. I mean, we already do formative testing. We already have, we're online to do more performance-based demonstrations, portfolios. I mean, we are creating that, that model. It, w it would just be eradicating one um, unnecessary aspect of things we've been doing. Yeah, <coughs> I I it, would, it would force the state, ODE, to move forward quicker. Because right now the conversation is all down here and there's, there's a lot of agreement on the ineffective. I don't know what it is. You gave it but it would me. sort of bring it to the <coughs> higher level of conversation. Right. So I, I understand that. So I, I think that I, the missing piece in my mind is just that I like, I don't even want to say if, like when we say no, when we say no, we're not doing this anymore because we're doing this instead. I mm -hmm. want the this instead to be laid out. Because kind of what you're saying is like, we're on the path to that, we're creating that, we're, you know, and, and we're just taking this piece out. It's, it's, not, it's not exactly that. Like, if I'm gonna go to the state and say, this is what we're doing instead, then I wanna be like, this is what we're doing instead, not just, we're creating something and we're just not gonna do this part right now. And so I think that's, I just wanted something, I just would love to see something a little bit more concrete and maybe that's the, that's the next step forward that maybe you might be talking about. And if that means, visiting Ashland and talking with like, what are those things? And then working with Sue and this integrated plan and having like, these are the things we're going to do instead. Then we can say, now we're gonna say no to this because we're doing this, you know, come at me, <laughs> you know, well, but I, I, I want to have that teeth. I want to have the yeah. teeth. I don't want to have this arbitrary. We're not doing this because we're going to try to do this. I want to be, we're not doing this because we're doing sure. this. Well, I'll get back to my own story, which is in 2014, 15, when we went through this, and I was promised by Nancy Golden, that was the superintendent that I worked with in Springfield. And she was at the state. She said, we're gonna have this great thing happen. So I thought, okay, okay, that's good. At least the conversation is there. Eight years later, nothing, right? And there's just this intransience about looking for this highest tier. And the highest tier is really stuff that is beyond the individual student. You know, it's, it's this cross district and and uh, cross-state kind of information. And uh, I think there are just too many kids that are gonna be floating down the stream before they finally, as a state, look at something, unless we, we push the issue. And that's what I, I think individual districts should and could do. And I'm hoping to do that in Springfield, too. Can I mean, answer your question or, or address your <coughs> observation? It takes a long time, for example, I think, for the, for this state, for one, it's New York, you know, and, and uh, we're sort of provincial, and it's got to be, you know, homegrown. Um, it just takes a long time for that to happen, and we had a good start with the new path, and then we sort of abandoned that for, for other reasons. And uh, so anyway, I, I keep saying, given a search along, not nearly as long as Michelle search, but I just keep saying students are getting left behind and going through this test, and I, I particularly saw this in Pleasant Hill because I was a K-12 music teacher, so I got to see them from the very earliest ages. And they begin to believe what the test says they are. Oh, you have not mm -hmm. met in, in language arts, you've not met in math. And 
they start getting pulled out of the things they love because the strategy, at least then, I don't know if it's changed, was to double dose, tri triple dose, right? And um, that, <coughs> to me, is just <coughs> unforgivable, you know? And then, so we set these students on this path to not succeed. And uh, I, I'm okay not letting the, the feds have Springfield's data, you know? If we can design, if we can really focus on the kids. So as you, you probably tell, I have a little bit of frustration perhaps, over the years, but been pushing this a long time. And uh, if I saw that that data, I'm, I'm still waiting for someone to say, well, here's what you're missing as far as what that data gives us. I think, man, we're spending all this money, right? Mm -hmm. But I ask every every administrator, assessment team, and they're really, they, there's not any good answer to how they use it. And if you talk to Mapleton teachers, the bulk of Maple Mapleton teachers are not feeling like this test is a good thing. You know, for us to have to create something to convince the state that this is bad, I don't need that personally. I have enough faith in the teachers here and the staff and in our kids that if we just rip that thing out, we're going to be good. We will be good. I, I know enough. To, to not have to beg the, the state or defend our actions because we're doing it for, um, we're doing what's best for kids. Prior to No Child Left Behind, we were doing the formative and interim assessments. Yep. So the fact that the data hasn't it really goes practically back. changed or the results, the outcomes haven't changed over the ensuing 20 years, it's like, oh. Okay, well, we can go back to that. We're not going to be any worse off. And I would argue that we're going to be much better off because in these 20 years, we have come up with better teaching techniques and better strategies for reaching a broader range of students. I'd rather put my attention and my dollars in that. So the, the question about the alternative is, is really valid, and it's mm -hmm. not a simple answer, uh, in part because uh, this change from all appearances has to come from the ground up. Um, and I think, so in terms of the New York Performance Consortium Schools, it started out with just a small handful. And then one school would teach another school how to do it. And then they would be accepted into the consortium because yes, we're on the same, on the, the same uh, plane. And, uh, and it really was incredibly diverse in terms of the income levels, the student population, et cetera. But it did have to grow. And so I, I think that's just the approach. We, we can't just say to the ODE, we're definitely going to do this. But we can begin, those who have a vision can begin working with one another and supporting one another. And it's a golden moment in terms of Ashland because they, they really are, they, 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 they've been hungry to share what they've been doing for nine years. And, and now it's beginning to begin the vice principal for nine years, the previous nine years, at Ashland is now a talent middle school, mm -hmm. which is a rural community, not, not, doesn't have the money that Ashland does. Uh, and uh, they're gonna be beginning that process in talent. So a school, a district like Mapleton could partner mm -hmm. as they're beginning to grow model to yeah. meet their That's community, right. their demographics, their reality, so, but it's, it's too, it's, we, we have to start over in one sense. It's, it's almost like we forgot so much of what we used to know about early childhood development. And, and, and then this thing just happened to us. And so we have to relearn what we can. I'm curious your thoughts, both of yours. One of the questions I've had is pre-pandemic, it seemed like these the, the scores for the smart amounts was used by universities and other higher level education systems um, as kind of screening and, and, any, and if you have a, a student that tests well, um, they, that was one of the ways they demonstrated the proficiency and could get everything from scholarship to, to it. And then the pandemic happened and it, and it seems like the states are not or 
colleges and universities aren't using those. Has there been any thought on, from you to about like in two years, are the universities saying that they're not seeing it? I mean, what, what kind of is higher level education using this data for? Um, not that you can't show proficiency in other ways, um, because I think there's great ways of showing it, but like Mary was saying, like having something as a plan rather than to, to be kind of building the airplane mid when you're in the air is how it would feel. So that would be my question. One of my questions. I, I believe it's now 3,400 colleges in the United States no longer mandate uh, uh, ACT or SAT scores for admission. And the, the state of Oregon, no, no state institution mandates that anymore. The days of SAT are over, and it's probably the state of California lawsuit that made the difference. And it, it was raised by a, a lot of members of communities of color, but the, the, the point they made what affected everybody, it's the kids with money have parents who hire SAT coaches to jig up the scores of their kids to get them into colleges. Meanwhile, they get to beat out these kids who don't have SAT coaches and the whole system is rigged in favor of the people who have money. And the courts were, were in the process of making that decision, and the regents in the state of California said, we surrender, you're right, we, we can't defend this anymore. So. Well, they've also found that the SATs and these kinds of uh, entrance exams aren't predictors of success. There's better, your zip code is a better predictor of success than the SAT or something like that. So at the same time that they're getting hit with lawsuits, uh, the colleges are going, well, you know, we use them to see who's going to finish. I just would hate to see any of our graduates at a disadvantage for not having a number on their forehead of what they passed as test with. So I just would, that's where I thought we were heading, but I didn't know if, that, if people were looking post-pandemic, like, because right now it seems like it's a pause, not a, right, like, and what will lead that to a permanent decision? Everything that I've read about that is that it's not a pause because they're realizing it really isn't a good indicator. So they don't, they're not using it anymore. I don't see it coming back, but I don't have a crystal ball. And right. ju yeah. Just to name, those are two different tests, yeah. right? ACT, right. And, uh, ACT and SAT are different than the state test. Yes. And so standardized testing in general, they're moving from those standardized tests, but the, like, States at some point talked about using ACT or SATs in order to make that for the purpose of college going and chose to go with um, Smarter Balance or Perk, whatever year that was, I can't remember. There have also been talk of just accepting the NAEP as, as, as surrogate for um, the standardized tests in that it's more nationally recogni recognized and it's uh, it's a sample, so it just does. It doesn't drive everything. It doesn't label. It doesn't label kids because of the, the, the random sampling technique. So. And um, teachers don't have to spend months preparing their kids for the name test. Is given randomly to schools across the country. And so you just get it when you get it. Did we ever get it? The name? I don't ever remember seeing it here. Well, I feel when I was in 4J. Some 4J school gets it every year, yeah. but here, I don't know how long it would take right. to rotate to here. <laughs> so, it's <Right>. never, <laughs> so. Have to find us. <laughs> I have lots of thoughts about assessment, not necessarily this decision. So I'd like just to separate those as an educator, and ho hopefully you see like where we're headed in leadership and my experience. Like, 100% the forms of <clears throat> assessment that we're talking about, performance, formative, that's where the learning happens, that's where um, the excitement happens, all the, all the things, like that. that's where, for me, school becomes about learning and real. Um, and so philosophically, like 100% aligned to all the assessment conversations that have been had. Um, and, and have experience, like, the school, I, the small school I come from, to, to just I have to say it because to your point about small schools, it was like let's try it here and bring it into the large. I left a small school for that exact reason because it was like it was, I could spend the rest of my life happy 
there, it was beautiful. And it was like, nobody's paying attention to us at all. <laughs> like, we're never going to change the system. And so that's part of the reason I'm here, is like, trying to find a way to make it real, right? And um, so, So there's the piece about like, what do, what do we know about our students? The, the real purpose of state testing is accountability, right? And that word can mean a lot of things. And I, I guess that's what I'm going back and forth on thinking through this is um, the state has to have accountability to, our, is our system learning and are there inequities that we're addressing, right? All the things. and quantitative measures on some standardized tests seem to be the way that people say there's, we can tell if it's happening or not. We can spend years talking about whether that works or not. Um, for, uh, if I go back to our presentation there, for me, who are we accountable to? We're accountable to the Mapleton School District. They don't see value in the test. Don't care about the test. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. You know, like we we'll get in trouble with whoever. You know, but like I care about local measures of accountability. Period. I care about every student in the school. Did we provide you the experience to learn and be your best, right? And um, and to put you on a level playing field with folks not from a small district in the middle of Western Lake County, right? Um, and I think, that I guess, all the forms of assessment that we're talking about are the, are the measures of accountability that I care about and, and that you see in performance, what was it called? Performance Consortia, right? And California's got all sorts of leading by learning or whatever it's called, these consortia that are moving in these directions, whether they take state tests or not, you know? And so, I don't know. I, I guess ultimately, like, there's a piece of me that's like, no matter what, I don't care about that test. Whether we give it opt in, opt out, give it, don't give it, right? Like, that's not, it doesn't drive my planning and leadership in And so, like, like, I've been asked this question multiple times. My ultimate answer is right now, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to keep does doing it. Get what in I the way, do. though? That's what I Well, want. so, and, and I've, I've been reflecting on this, like, the whole time, do, like, trying to get an honest assessment of does it impact um, us and do our teacher, right? Do we spend time teaching to it and those kind of things? And I, I, I guess I don't have enough evidence either way to answer that question, but there's a piece of evidence that I keep going, ah, but I think this is the evidence. We don't have science at the elementary. Yeah. Yeah. We had less arts at the K-12. That can be for funding reasons, but science is, it like, when I, and I'm a science educator <laughs> by, by, like, practice, right? Um, that went away because, and, and Brenda can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but in most districts, that went away because we didn't perform well enough on reading and math testing. And so does it make a difference? If we look at it right now, our bell schedule, it says yes, it, ha it has made a difference, right? Are we working to undo that difference? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I can't answer like today, you know, for, for our teachers in our classrooms, how closely are they looking at that data and saying, you know, I, I have to get my kids ready for the test. I think it's different by teacher. And I actually think it's different by what period of time you've been a teacher within. Mm -hmm. um, well, and Mapleton, in my 30 plus years, has never um, threatened to, to hold teachers' evaluations based on performance or anything like that. I've never felt as a teacher or as a leader that there was um, intimidation to you know, 
perform all the time. Perform well or cheat mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we spend as much time as a lot of schools on the preparedness, you know, preparing students. Because if you teach to the standards, theoretically, you should be teaching to whatever proficiency model you have. Um, and it should be consistent. I, I do know from being a classroom teacher that there are students that don't perform well on that state assessment, that it does impact their self-esteem, and that they are um, quite amazing contributors to this community, and could certainly go beyond and, and do better than some people that maybe ace the, mm -hmm. the test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also kind of a rule follower, just telling you. <laughs> like it makes me, in fact, I feel my caper source coming on right now, just thinking about it, just, because it is, it's, you know, there's a reason these other schools that even do have great yeah. uh, alternatives in place. There's a reason they haven't, they haven't had, made the leap. They haven't, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, there's a reason. There is a reason, and there's a reason why a lot of behaviors that we've endured over our history persist until someone says no, and then others follow. And so, you know, I mean, I've, I'm, I would be proud to be the district that pushed people to having this conversation and and acting in concert with us um, if you know I, I think that would be that would be beautiful and I do believe that it, that's what it's going to take it's with all injustices it took someone to stand up and say nope and to me this is an injustice when I hear you say some kids are um, you know their self-esteem is impacted it's a, that's enough to me. I mean, wh what we're trying to say in our, in our mission is that we strive to base all of our decisions on what is best for all, all students. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I mean, it's no secret where I stand. I've only been bringing this up for the last 10 years. So that, that we strive to do what's best for all students, like one of my thoughts revolved around that for this, which, like, I, um, if we, and it kind of, like, some, one of you said something like, this would be front page news, and like, I actually don't think that would be what's best for all of our students necessarily. Like, we're doing so many other things, and like, trying to, I mean, we just spent 45 minutes here on a giant list of other of things, that I don't want, I, I wouldn't, well, while I feel comfortable saying, yeah, opt in, great, and, be, and sort of making that statement, like, I don't want that to dominate, like, I don't feel like it's the most important thing in front of our school right now. I think it's, it is important, and I don't want it to dominate our, kind of, where we end up. Like, I, so, that kind of made me, I don't know, just, I don't want to, I'm not sure it would be what's best for all students if it ended up meaning that we couldn't, that we had to put more effort into into sort of being this poster child for this than act than also doing all the other things we want. So, yeah. Well, it sure doesn't have to go that way. Right. I'm not sure that it does either. But I did want to. I do. That's yeah. a, a way that I'm thinking about it that I felt like I needed. But I agree, it does not have to go that way. Yeah. And it is one thing we're doing. We it's certainly not the panoply of our um, stewardship of this district. Right. It is one thing that would, if I am, from my point of view, if it is pulled out, it's only going to enrich the other things we do. It's just going to be one thing. I, I mean, I've still look at who's here. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were still. Oh, we can turn you guys off now. <laughs> um, I mean, in my conversations with with teachers, and I have talked to a number of Mapleton teachers who have said they would be delighted not to have anything to do with it. Yeah. Again, I keep. I feel like I'm. The, the things I'm saying aren't to argue that I want the test. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like we we feel. I feel like we're like these bad guys over here. Like the test is great. 
I, we hate the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to do it. But we are trying to like make sure we have tease out other, right, in place. and tease out all these other <laughs> potential implications so that we make a considered decision. It's You've had yeah. ten Thank years. You. I mean, it's, yeah. this has been brought up for a very long time, and I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think it really honors the, the process that we've been in to say. Well, now we have to do this because we, we don't like the test, but we're afraid to, I don't know if you're afraid, or I'm you're, afraid. you're cons <laughs> uh, not, not comfortable pulling us out because we don't have something else in place. We do have other things in place. Ask any of the staff here. They will say they know what's going on with their kids, and like Sue just said, it's about are we accountable to our kids? They are accountable to our kids. This this test makes them less accountable to our kids, in my opinion. And that's the message that I've gotten from the staff that I've spoken to. And I've spoken to a majority of the staff about this. It's it's I mean it's no secret, like both these guys said, you can't it's not difficult to find people who feel like this is a bad idea. So in our staff, it's, you're not going to find a lot of cheerleaders for spending time on this test. You just won't find it. I, I do, th I mean, it's an interesting spot to have collective agreement that we don't like the test. Right. right. Like that, and then, so what do you do about it? Do you just deal with it because, because you're supposed to? You know, and it like I do. I don't. Know. It, the opt-in still gives the. I mean, it does. It puts the choice to parents and families, and I think we can share information to. I think either way, whether it's opt-in yeah, or sure. opt-out, we're going to share and send a participation plan in today. So, no matter what, we're sending information about why you should take this test, <laughs> right? And and what or what the purpose of this test is is the way I wrote that. But. Um, there's something to family choice, to local control, to local assessment, those kind of things. Um, I, I'm, the point I'm trying to get to in my head is, it's funny, there's a piece of me that's like, I want to be able to point and say, oh, you want to know why we don't do that? Because we do this, right? Like exactly how you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. And there's a piece that's like, we said we're not doing that, we better have this in place so that when they come asking, it's there, right? And it puts that kind of light a fire and make sure it's there and solid and go and could move move us even faster in that direction, perhaps. Like, mm -hmm. in, my, in my opinion, we're gonna move fast so, in that direction anyway, yeah, but that sounds great, it could light a fire and be like, yeah. no, and, and I, I guess my wonder is, does it give permission to our staff to be more creative, more focused on performance. Like I will say, t uh, I've, been, I've been in this game a while now, but 12 years ago, if you said, hey, we have to, like, we have an opportunity to do more project-based learning, especially as a math teacher, right? Project-based, move, to, move towards this and incorporate these things, like, yeah, but the test, right? And that would be people's reason for shifting. Um, I, I, I just don't, I don't know what permissions it would open up for our staff to be like, hey, like, we're actually fundamentally saying that's not what we're help holding ourselves accountable to, and so we're going to go in this direction. Yeah. With, the, with the light of fire piece, um, like, do you see that you and your staff with your leadership have the capacity to do that though and be responsible? We're doing that anyway. We're like, that we are, like, I wouldn't mind a fire. Uh, like, fires are helpful and like, we're, we're gonna get that in place either way. I don't know Ashlyn's model specifically. My kid goes to Kelly. Um, <laughs> so uh, they have, some, that's more proficiency model versus accountability model. I like both, um, but I think to the, do we have a portfolio of learning that our kids show and 
and say, of course I met the standards, here's, here's my body of work, we're doing that either way. And so do we have the capacity for it? Well, we better. Um, <laughs> and so did, like, for, that's why I say, you know, either way this goes, I wanna go that direction, we are gonna go that direction. Does this help give per more permission to our staff to do it? I, I don't know who needs that permission and who doesn't um, without more, right? I just haven't been here long enough to know kind of those intricacies for each staff member. Um, but I, it certainly wouldn't close those permissions. You know what I mean? Or, or reduce the momentum to move. opt-in or opt-out, or was it that it was not at all? Like, one of you, because I don't know which voice was to what face, but <laughs> one of you was closer and I could hear you better. Um, and I couldn't always hear, like, the question being asked, but I could get the gist of it. Um, you were talking about, and I thought it was, like, either not offering state testing, I couldn't quite tell, it was a little jarbly, or if it was just were there three options, basically, is what I'm saying, or was there just the two, right? So it's just opt-in or just opt-out, right? Is An opt-in is not the same as, which is basically what we're saying to do versus 
have it for just to have it. Opt in is versus just versus a waiver. Is well, so the I think the oh, example oh, is the New York that consortia uh -huh. has been given a, a waiver by the state to okay. say you don't have to participate. I, I, okay, that's not that on the it. table okay. at this point. So ours is just the opt in or opt out. Yeah, okay. that's, that's where I got kind of confused. It's okay. interesting because about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it all run together. Portland didn't like the, and it was before Smarter Balance, so it was the one of the Oaks, the Oaks, Oaks test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So s Portland, it didn't didn't um, jive with them, so they created their own, and so I guess that's where I don't understand why it couldn't be simpler in that. They didn't want to use that. They wanted to show this is this is a way of demonstrating that kids are able to do the work. Um, and we know that people could use portfolio samples, work samples rather, for the portfolio in their portfolios to show proficiency in math or writing or reading. Um, so, couldn't we do a localized test or a, a measurement that says that our kids are ready, that they meet the the level of proficiency? to demonstrate the knowledge to graduate, but why does it have to be a, a, a standardized test in so, like what Portland did? Right. I think the Portland thing, though, was before No Child Left Behind. So I think that that was the difference. Like, they were able to just be like, I'm not doing this, and then there's a federal thing that happened. But I, I love that there's some precedent, right? That's cool. So just to, that's the reason I pulled this slide up. So. You're welcome for the segue. Yes, it was perfect. <laughs> coming back to this, and <laughs> if I can put it bigger, but. Um, Right, we're held accountable to these five long, long longitudinal performance. I explained graduation rates, um, regular attendance rates, and uh, ninth grade on track, and then third grade reading proficiency rates measured by ELA. Right, like this one is part of this conversation at some level, right? But there's actually like permissions built into to the um, Student Success Act and Student Investment Account specifically that says other local metrics may be used to develop applicable performance growth targets. And it's interesting because if you read it closely, I think it's an and. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're talking about is maybe an or, but it's a spot to push on hey, if you mean local metrics, we mean local metrics. And opt-in doesn't mean this goes away. It just means our participation rate is likely even lower than it already is, which is low. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it, right? We're, sure, third grade reading, go go look at that data. It's, mm -hmm. it's so suppressed anyway, good luck making sense of it. Um, yeah. We're gonna hold ourselves accountable here, right? And do, and do this other thing instead. Um, and, and tell you how our third graders are demonstrating their proficiency or not. So I just, there, there is permission-ish being built in to current legislation, and it's an interesting spot to kind of point to and say like, hey, mm -hmm. you told us we could look at some mm -hmm. other data, well, that's what we're doing. So I, yeah, and, and it, it like, I'd have to go look it up really closely, but I think I've had this conversation once, and I think this is an and, and some people are quiet about that and at the state level, and some people are louder about that and mm -hmm. at the state level, so I'd have to go verify it, so. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to uh, analyze the ODE in terms of schizophrenia, but uh, it, it is maddening, and here's some examples. That there were wonderful programs called PADS and Pads Hope Desk. Was, was and in yeah, Springfield at Absolutely. Centennial Elementary and Thurston High School, the teachers loved it. It was about performance based assessment. Yeah. And the uh -huh. ODE was funding it, and the teachers loved it. And then after two years, the ODE, and, and I read the, 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 uh, the summary of it, you know, the executive summary, and it, it said, everybody loves this. And the ODB pulled all the funding. It's like, well, the legis legislature pulled. Yeah, but pulled they the didn't find. We asked them <laughs> to, to yeah. just just do something. You can get the money back if you want to. Yeah. And they, and anyway, and then the the federal ESSA, which took the place of No Child Left Behind, allows for innovative states 
to be able to get a waiver from the federal government to do away with standardized testing to meet the federal law. And a state like New Hampshire, for instance, does a hybrid model. It is almost all uh, show what you know, performance-based, everything we've been talking about, but they also do smarter balance at grades three, eight, and 11 in order to show that what they're doing meets the crazy criteria that the federal government has. And, and I say crazy because somebody somewhere just says, okay, you know, 460 equals the cut score for, you know, third graders in reading or whatever it is. And it's like, who are these people that just get to say that, you know? And so, so, so if that allowance is made, a, a, a go for it. You know, there's just, there's, there's examples of people pushing the system, but the system just, it's, it's, it's stuck in, in some profound sense. It's stuck and it needs people to just be innovative if the system won't. Well, we got Sue here, who's like teaching us about innovation on the daily. I mean, it's the things that that I would I've been here a long time. I couldn't have imagined we'd be having conversations about, and they're all out of the box. They're all something. Well, well, we'll do this, and we'll pull it from over here, and and this could happen, and actually, yeah, it could, and 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 it is, and it's. I mean, it's just a, we've, you've sort of set a tone here, which, I mean, I'm gonna pat myself on the back for voting to hire you, and I think all of us should, because, you know, we've got, we've got something going on, but it's really about innovation. And there's no shortage of criticism about how public education is, is um, constipated. It's like we're just stuck, so, I, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, relieve ourselves of <laughs> that. like an hour and a half and here it is flipping quarter to nine so um, I think we're gonna have to call the question um, and I don't want to stifle this and if you have something to say music because I can kind of see your brains I can see some little twirlies coming out of your head I mean totally I like I feel like yeah I feel like before we actually like vote I do have one more thing that I want to say because it's not the vote I care about like so assume that I vote for this because I, you know, um, because I don't, whatever. But just uh, make that that assumption for a second. And but I, what I'm what I've been trying to say with my questions and my comments is I care about how we go through with this after we vote. Mm -hmm. I want it to be effective for our school, mm -hmm. and I don't want to just take a vote in order to like send a message, but not have it be effective for our school. So that's what I was saying where. I want us to, I mean, I think this could be a great thing because you're talking about wanting to have this model role of school. In order to be a model, you need to have other people working with you and seeing that, oh, this is great, let's do this. So it, it can foster these partnerships where that's what ends up happening. So like, um, you know, and it can, um, and it can have a bigger effect on the whole state, on the whole testing industry if we work with other people. And so I don't actually like feel I don't feel like our path forward to me is like, well, I'm gonna give whatever, I'm, I don't know, like I'm gonna go out, stand alone and say this is wrong, you know, like I'm willing to do that, but I also feel like the plan forward is gonna be more effective, our effect is gonna be bigger if we actually have a, a plan past that for um, working with other people to make it more effective, you know, to improve the things we don't like about assessment. So I just felt like I really wanted to say that because I don't want to have a vote and just be like, well, that's the end of it. That's no. what we're doing. Oh, gosh, so. no. I mean, and I bless you for saying that. I'm happy you said that because, you know, I mean, I spend um, a lot of time with these guys for the past few years. Every, you know, every, we meet a couple times a month, 
We're not, it's, it's not just Mapleton. I mean, I, yes, I live and breathe Mapleton. It's the center of my little universe, but I feel beholden to kids nationwide. So, I mean, um, while I, I'm not looking to have, you know, the cameras coming down and they're interviewing our little three-year-old, the five-year-olds, or, you know, talking about how, how does this impact you, that isn't, that isn't, it's not like we're looking for the glamour. We are looking for efficacy. We, right. we want to be effective. So whatever that means, and you can help build this. I mean, you have, a, you have an idea in your head, and, and I want to talk to you more about it. And I think we want to talk more about that. We, we need to see, I mean, this is a first step. That's all this is. It's really a first step. And I think we're just, we, we're lining ourselves up to have an effect on other kids and, and make this a, a bigger statement. It is a statement, for sure, and, and it will get noticed, and um, we need to, we need to d design how, what that means. I mean, I'm not really sure where you're going with it, so you know, it needs to be fleshed out. Um, but I have, no, I have no qualms about us voting for this tonight and then developing this thing. It's a moving, living, breathing organism. I mean, do you, would you feel comfortable with that? Does that, or would you want to have that whole thing in place before you voted? No, no, I don't feel the need to have stuff in place because it, I, it's a process. And yeah. uh, but I, um, I, I would like. I wanted to say that because if if we do vote for this and it ends up being something that I, we, I don't think is good for the school, like you know, I sort of want to have. I want to be able to say that then, like, hey, why we voted for this? I, I, like, I really actually think it hasn't been good because of these reasons, you know, uh -huh. or something like. Um, and I want to, I, I want to be able to continue to assess the effects of our decision, you mm -hmm. know. And I want okay. that to be a part of our idea going forward mm -hmm. before we vote on it. No, I like that, I, and I respect it. We're trying to do what's best for kids. shifts from this decision, which has kind of been looming, right, um, to, I, I think what you're, Checking what I'm in. hearing yeah. is to, yeah. so what are the impacts of it, and is there something else, right, and for me it's like, yeah. so, so is there accountability, yeah. can we, can we say without a doubt that our students are getting a good education and learning, right. That answers yes. That, so maybe we turn state testing and accountability measures, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that, so that it stays. Mm -hmm. It stays on our agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Through there. yeah. Okay. okay. So um, it is an action item. We're not at action items yet. We can wait or we can we can move it as an action item to cap this conversation with the pleasure of the board can I ask one other question um, what or, or I don't know if this should be the question now or like but like I am curious about the impact if they pull our funding or like what our yeah. plan is if they pull our funding like that's an important one mm -hmm. for me I mean, it, I think that it's a it's a game of chicken at this point. And if they said, uh, we really will pull your funding, we would, my in, in all my understanding, we would administer the test. We would become an opt out district instead of an opt in. But we would have we would definitely have time to do that. That is that was I mean that's my whole point about if this becomes harmful to our students because they pull our funding it's, it's harmful. obviously harmful to mm -hmm. our students and so at that at that point I would say well I want to do this because it's not actually you know like it's not, it's not worse than having no funding to pay teachers for these great programs we want to have but I think yeah. pointing yes. to this 
Oh, it's not up there anymore. Yeah. Pointing to the and piece. We, we may be able to have, I mean, it, it appears to me we can have that discussion and that argument with, with ODE. Actually, you're giving, us, you're giving us permission to do what we're doing. I, I will say that is only one small part of funding, so <laughs> just be careful. That, like, right. I, I brought it up to say, like, right. this is, there are spots for openings to talk about this, and I will say that's where is this big and mm -hmm. the funding is this big. Yep. And, but we do, there is, like, a process that they go through to check if we're in compliance, and yes. then if we're not, then they, we have a certain amount of time to get in compliance, mm -hmm. and we they would have to tell us the consequences of all of that. And so I, I think that provides a little bit of a window where we can mm -hmm. assess whether, you know, yeah, what's what's going to happen and whether we would want to change course. Because I have that same <laughs> question. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So is that, is that, is that my understanding correct? Yeah, I, I believe so. And I, so, and I've always been under the impre impression it's through Division 22 Yep. reporting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know any other, I'm not aware of another avenue where they come in and go, wait, what? And it's um, Division 22 standards. It's, so that'd be next and it happened January to us. or whatever. It did, right. yeah. didn't that happen? It did, yeah. it did happen to us, and we just ago. caved. Maybe, you know, maybe we would push it and, and have well, engage in conversation. Well, we have something to show and prove right. over this portfolio style plan. I actually think it holds teachers more accountable than a state test, so. Yeah, it's for it's sure. It's worked right into their curriculum that they can show and prove. Yes, sir. I think, I think your wording is, is protective. Uh, and I think that, so five or six years ago, um, Lake Oswego High School had a 90% opt-out. 10% of the students took smart checked with a fair test, which is the national organization that's been dealing with these issues for 30 years now, and asked them, can you give us one example of one district that was uh, uh, punished financially for non, for, for students not taking the test and whatever it does? And they said, we do not know of one single example in the United States. But everyone lives under this cloud of fear. But, but I, I think your wording is, is smart. It says we're, we're giving the tests. It's just you have to opt in. So you're not forbidding anyone. You're right. Anything else? Well, um, that's what the resolution looks like. And. Um, I would entertain a motion. I'm not a state dollar. <laughs> I, I move that we um, adopt. adopt this proposed resolution um, for the state testing. You need a second. I get to second it. I don't think, oh, I don't think you can either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Because I would have. Right. <laughs> I <would> have <laughs> third, fourth, <laughs> fifth. So okay. I, will, I will second it. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, raise your hand. That passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, thank you guys for showing up and enlightening the conversation, bringing more breadth to what we already know it's just it's i appreciate you guys and thanks for driving out here i know yeah and you don't and, have to stay and if you want a k-12 music job we'll start raising money now <laughs> oh god for real <laughs> I, did, I did really enjoy 
I yeah, and I well. fought against it because the K side wasn't part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is a great district but to do that in because it's very yeah, you should oh it's very inclusive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you looking? <laughs> well, uh, we I wouldn't say we're, it's not like an open position, but like it would be dream. We've had like, we had a K twelve music program for years and years. Mm -hmm. I went through this district, and when I was here, that was a component of education, and it, it was one. It was amazing and wonderful, and I would love to have it back. And of course, I think we all would. I think funding for it, we have to we have to find. Still have to get the position, but if you want to come volunteer on our early release days <laughs> to offer right. performance arts <laughs> and music specifically, mm -hmm. and that's literally what I'm working on asking around right now is during that early re release time, do we have enough community partners to provide performance arts for our kids because we don't have it? So if you'd like to volunteer, you got a spot. A, a team, I think, my wife, who's we'll take. We'll take uh, two. Well, that's you have, that means you have more. So even better. That means you have. You're just like I'm so sorry. There's two of us. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're connected to more great right? teachers that are yeah, that's totally retired and want to come out. That's so what I was thinking. Or not retired. Man out here, I will call you. I promise. This is. I have already sent out feelers and mini spots. Ooh, so. I love this here we go. part Yay. of the conversation. Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I said Yay! Even better! <laughs> yes, we'll start, we'll here. We'll start house here. Yeah, I'll tell my mother and I'll, I'll actually need to flip another house. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. Right. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for a lot of us to share with you. That's why we took it to the state, was mm -hmm. to try to have conversations with other, reach mm -hmm. more people. And, and yes, it, I mean, yeah, yes to all of it. I mean, moving forward, however we do it, yeah. Uh, but I think we need to move forward on this agenda, <laughs> otherwise we're never going home. So here we are. Um, I'd be happy to call um, middle school, high school report done, unless yeah. anybody had anything <coughs> Um, I mean, is there something um, that you're dying to tell us? No, not, I mean, not that I can't wait. Okay. Uh, we're in a good spot. And then we did elementary. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's updates on things that are happening, but y'all are generally informed about those things. Um, and then we have a meeting on Monday that if anybody comes Hell up yeah. with, like, oh, I wish you would have told us about Blake. Can you give me an update? I can do that on Monday. Okay. That would that would require having to like an open session and then we go into yeah, executive true. session because you can't really talk about all that kind of public so stuff. E in email session. me if you need any updates. Yeah. <laughs> so that we can get that organized. <laughs> so, and then finance, tech, maintenance. Um, I, I did speak to the well, which is the main thing going on. Um, finance into just on that list. Does anybody have or not list, but the all the, the report? Does anybody have? Questions or wonderings about any of those expenditures? Mm -hmm. uh, Jared, anything big you want to add? Well, I can tell you what some of them are about, but if no one has any questions, then. I, I think. Don't mind spending money, we'll just keep spending. Yeah, would you <laughs> just keep spending money? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, well, let's. Oh, oh I, we did approve purchase of a greenhouse today for farm to table, a smaller oh. one. And the plan is that that's done this year, and they get to grow, use it and grow, and it's a, s a smaller profile, but it can move up to the elementary after mm -hmm. we go larger no. down oh, cool. here. So that you'll see that coming through later, oh, but that's oh, actually okay. a cool. big deal. And the, yes. the funniest part was somebody, I don't know who, was in my office today and goes, uh, I said it kind of jokingly, I think, I forget what they said, and then they're like, well, maybe we could buy a greenhouse. I'm like, done. <laughs> <laughs> literally, we had just, you know, approved oh, it. Oh, hilarious. So, anyway, mm -hmm. that's all. Like, when that's you say it's small, like small, like right. what? It's 10 by 14, I think, if I 
Oh, okay. So like oh, Margie has, okay. that's the size oh, we that's have. Oh, okay, that's, that's sure. perfect. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. One, yeah. And then I'm going to go up to the elementary. That would be, that'd be so cool. And then what's, cool. what's we'll the, big one. what's the big one going to yeah. be? Uh, we don't know yet, but we think that's going to be large scale. And we have students who will be presenting at Rotary in, I don't actually know the, whenever we're on the Rotary schedule, but they're planning and preparing for it and um, sharing and asking for donations and making that presentation. Fantastic. So, That's really uh, great. They yeah, just made $80,000 at their event last yeah. Saturday, so, so they, they have money to this. get us. <laughs> <laughs> That's our hope. So, oh. yeah. I, was, I don't know which one I was at, but somebody presented and all of a sudden people just were like, $100, $100, and I was like, I need something. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ask for a greenhouse now. Yay. <laughs> so, um, awesome. Yeah. And then... I think we're at the yeah. okay. so we're at we're the done. consent agenda. So I'd like to um, oh someone's knocking. Oh that is that our kids? Is it children? It sounds like sounds like maybe kids. I think it might be a little <laughs> Well there's enough of us to actually yeah. continue on. Yeah. I think yeah. we can wait if you do want to wait. Oh do uh, they lost by one. It was very oh, close. Okay. Like it was a really like crazy comeback. That's when I started texting everyone <laughs> and emailing. I'm like, any way I can reach out. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, it was a good game. Well, I'm glad you made it. Yeah. So yeah. oh, we were hearing Morgan and drove. I listened on the thing. Uh -huh. Awesome. That's why it was a little slower, a bit of a drive than I planned on, but it's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's no Solo problem. Hankies. Oh God. Oh, oh, I'm get very far. <laughs> I've done that. Maybe you want to take your jacket with you, Tess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't hurt your self-esteem. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. That was a callback. Burn. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> okay, we're at the consent agenda. The payroll check register accounts payable check register in the prior month's minutes, and I will uh, entertain a motion. I move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any any discussion here? No. Not hearing none. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, unanimous. <laughs> Moving on. Action items. Oh, the staff contract renewals. Oh, this is important. Are we going to talk about that on Monday? Mm. Or what? What is? Contract no, this. This is the contract. This is to renew yeah. everybody's contract. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, this is an oh this is an action item. Yes. <laughs> yes. And right. it doesn't. Yeah. Um, it doesn't say at what level. Like you can still right. bargain. Uh, yes, this is just this saying yeah. we're inviting you back. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, I will entertain a motion here. So moved. Moved Second. and seconded all those in I, favor. I'm abstaining. Oh, you will. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you must. Yeah. Okay, yeah. unanimous with one uh, oh, abstention. abstention. <laughs> uh, budget calendar. That has been... Oh, that's that one we received. Right. Yeah. We have to adopt our budget calendar. Yes. Basically the same as last year. Yep. With change. I move that we adopt the budget calendar for 23 24. Uh, second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, let's okay. see. Board guiding beliefs and value statement. We are actually going to um, adopt this or reject it. So it, it, it forever hold your peace. It's actually, this is always a working document and it can always be augmented and changed. So, but I think we gave it a really good college try and it's a pretty okay. cool document actually. So um, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the board getting beliefs and value statement. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Nice work y'all because this really is um, an elegant piece of writing, I think. And just for clarification on this, so, you know, I'll put the mission at the top of our mm -hmm. agenda, and so if you want the vision down, I mean, are we getting rid of the board goals that I tend to have at the end of it, and putting this on the okay, we're replacing it with this, website? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yes, because yeah, these board goals actually yeah, are... it was to replace those. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah. And these board goals about. are really actually antiquated. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then, and then I'll put them on the website here. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, aligning for student success plan. Well, we have to vote on this, right? What, your presentation. All right. I'll to entertain a motion. You don't have to until March 31st, but mm -hmm. if but you did it, it we'd would have be to be done and I'd vote. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I move that we adopt the Aligning for Student Success Plan as presented. That's what she presented earlier, right? Right. Mm -hmm. When I wasn't here. And you weren't right. here. So I'm. Um, so you can probably should. <laughs> Are you seconding? I did. Yeah. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Three yeas and an abstention. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 10.5 is done. Discussion items, June board meeting, June 14th. What, there's a question you, mark. So if we maintain the third week, that puts it out to June 21st, which is kind of late in June. So I wonder oh. if you wanted to go the 14th, which is the second week in June. Okay, it does, does anybody have a problem with that? I'm just getting there. I'll really double check really really slowly. I'm gonna be on vacation. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm going to Hawaii. You have to go on vacation. <laughs> right. That was a February thing. It's my turn. So. Yeah. yeah, you don't get you to go in June. <laughs> June 14th. I'm good with that. Um, that doesn't look good to me, too. I need a picture of you guys right now. <laughs> Welcome phone. to a virtual board meeting. I will don't check on here. I always have my paper copy. I'm right. just texting <laughs> on Facebook. Um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm it, it's so there's, there's the basketball camp that, co that um, yeah, Vanessa was doing. putting on that mm -hmm. week, and I am was gonna probably leave that night. So well, we could have a to go on a meeting. trip, huh? Um, leave that night. Oh, like to go on a, a trip. Hell, I, uh, yeah, a family, like a family trip. Mm -hmm. um, after that, so I was counting on it being on the twenty-first. Um, I mean, we can probably not leave the fourteenth. Can, can we not oh. decide on this tonight? Yeah. Can we wait and decide next month, or do we have oh, to yeah. decide now? Heck yeah. No, it's June. Okay, because I was needed. I mean, decide. you're messing with Jaren's plans, but I know, I know, but I'm messing with <laughs> other people who are going to be more mad at me than Jaren is. <laughs> <I have to laughs> you have like, to live with is that. There, yeah. Is there anything just to put out there? I'm not saying we still need to talk or just get side tonight, but is there any reason it has to be on the Wednesday? Can it be just the thirteenth mm -hmm. instead? Mm -hmm. Or that would work. It can. It or can. not? Or no? Or it can. Does it have to be at six? Could it be during the day? There's no school. Oh. Well, I work. But, oh, but she's yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's harder for it's harder for I'm me. still at work. So. Yeah. 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 Some okay. of us have to work soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I take but it back. <laughs> I didn't know, like, a different day that week. Maybe we'd bring that up like, next yeah, time. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. Need to it can. yeah. Because I like it being a little earlier in the month, but um, mm -hmm. if that Wednesday doesn't work, let's right. talk about a different day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that might, because that is specifically, like, that. it's specific to that day is my issue, potentially, so. And okay. Is it, is it because see. you have business that you want to, we need to take care of so that you can do no, your business? No, I just figure that it yeah. just puts it out. After school's been out for a little bit, yeah, so we were just making sure that you don't have to wrap up anything fiscally or something that, like, no. okay. well, well, aside from, I mean, we finalized the budget that day. Okay. And stuff, so. Then you know what you're working with. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Yeah. Oh, if we change it, do we have to change? Yeah, we have to change the budget. Oh. That's well, I will do my best to change my plans to make that night. I think I can. I just don't want to commit fully to it right now. What a so. considerate family member you are. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's talk, talk about it next, yeah. after you talk to your family. Mm -hmm. um, the pool building, yeah. can we talk about that next month? Or do we, do, is there I'm, a re, I mean. Are there any updates? I don't, huh? Are there any updates on it? No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I haven't even got that update. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I mean, I have some big concerns about it, but I but my concerns are too big to talk about tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, community engagement and committee updates. Uh, market calendar is April third. Um, oh yeah. And then I just presented on community engagement. <laughs> I feel like I won't be here we didn't put that forward. So. Sorry. Um, and then we did. I guess in the cancel it, cancel it. Cancellation of uh, school those two days, mm -hmm. like the, the walk to school day will be rescheduled. I think the talent show is postponed until mm -hmm. post, um, yeah, post spring break, but we don't have, we haven't nailed down that date yet. So we'll get postponements. The April 3rd out. thing is at what time? To, uh, geez, give me a second. I want to say five to seven, but I might be lying. And that's a Monday. Tuesday. Or, um, hold on. 
Monday is the third. Oh, shoot. Well, don't mark your calendars. Hold okay. on a second. That's why I kept saying Tuesday. I think it's on the fourth. That's so funny. Something about that week. I was on a thread yesterday for something totally different where everybody kept mixing the third and the fourth <laughs> and the month three and four. Mm -hmm. And so oh, finally I was like, this is a hilarious thread. I sent a calendar invite for where I think it's supposed to be. <laughs> so April 4th. Is that the same the day as the walkathon? April 4th, 5 p.m. Mapleton graduate. April 4th. Sorry. Take, uh, take back everything I said. Yeah, so family bingo. Tuesday. Tuesday, April 4th. That's yep. why I have it. Okay. So yeah. when's that walkathon? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I see. see the, um, oh. The time again? Five to six. 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 Five to yeah. We don't have a date on that. That's in April. Oh, okay. We didn't have a date on it yet. No date on it yet. Thank you. Sorry. In April. All right. So we're changing 11.4 to state testing discussion. Yeah, or state testing and accountability. Yeah, I accountability. Liked, I liked that measures. it being like really called out. State testing and accountability measures discussions or something. Okay. Yeah, just updating that name of that. So how's it been going so far? I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, wow. Hilarious. Hilarious. Do you have a couple hours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Michelle, look me for coffee when we have to get up and come back here. Yeah. I'll meet you at 6.30. Oh, 6.30. What does that look like? Um, <laughs> tribal and shared history. Do we have some update there or to discuss? Um, I have to do this. We, I um, met yeah. with... Um, Teresa and um, I should use the name. Teresa Springer. Yeah, and Spangler. 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 What did I say? Teresa Springer, oh, Spangler and Brad Neeper, yeah? Yes. And I just said, what did I say? Springer. Springer. I have a friend with the last name of Springer. That's why I did that. Okay. Um, That's why I thought it was Jerry. No. Oh. <laughs> Shireen. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we had uh, a really nice late lunch, early dinner. Uh, last week, the week before, everything runs together, I'm not sure. Um, and they were going to executive council to talk about, so that it's about, um, uh, I think I shared this last meeting, hanging the, the flag in the gymnasium, and um, what we want the event for doing oh, right, that right, to be. Right. And so what we talked about was a, like, a cu like cultural night mm -hmm. experience, and then some comments and remarks, and having, like, kind of a unveiling mm -hmm. whatever that is um and they i haven't heard back um specifically yet i didn't check email today so they may have emailed me today um and but they were meeting with the executive council i think this weekend and so i haven't heard back yet but we'll keep working towards okay. planning that excellent uh soup evaluation um we did that and i Pretty sure that I told you that I met with Sue and, and her evaluation is sitting in a vault in Paris somewhere. If I, if I have it, it's so we can in Paris. Yeah, that happened. Okay, budget committee members. I asked, um, or I put a APB out for Kathy West's number and I never didn't hear it from anybody because I don't have it. I, I only have her landline. Oh. Apparently. Do you have it? Well, I'm, I'll let me check. I, had, I have, you definitely have Carl's for sure. Okay. So I can get to Kathy through Carl for sure. Yeah, that would let be me, great. Let me check and see anyway. You also probably have Carrie's number, and she must know her mother's number. Yeah. Oh, I used to have Carrie's number. I only have Carl's, but I, I will... Yeah, text him um, and, a, and then just ask him if, if uh, it's okay if you share it with me, or you can ask her. Hey, yeah, you I, you I just can ask handle that. <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> it was better to play the phone. the right path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. More public comments from the um, <laughs> from the folks out there. Home. Okay. They all got tired. So um, I would say I, no Are there any com other com are there any comments from the board? <laughs> Oh, I have seen this. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. 
since since Brenda brought up a thong. This is how me and my wife tend to feel about. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you want money, just ask for money. Yes. <laughs> That's what we do at Grow. We do a huge fundraiser, oh, and excellent. there's some parents that are just like, I don't want to. And they're like, well, we had a goal of selling this many pastries, which would have been $200. They're like, here's $200. Yeah. I'm not going to take my kid around places. I'm not going to deliver these things. Don't I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to No, kind of here's, here. here's the money. money. Here's the money my kid should have raised. Don't bother me with this. Huh. And yeah. it works. Yeah. That's awesome. That is, that's, that's hilarious. hilarious. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I will say that's that, that's cool. It, they're, they're mi that makes the thing that are successful. Like having kids do something and reach out is also yeah it builds community. Yeah. It builds yeah. community. Yeah. but I, I I feel that way too. Oh, <laughs> me too. Well, especially if it's like day girl red candy, and you're like, I don't think I should be selling this to you. I want my kids. I want my kids to do this to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I? If no public or no uh, board comments at this point. Nine fifteen. So I must. Say, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. One. I'll second that. All those in favor, I think it's unanimous. And thank you all for sticking around for a very long evening. Thank you for zooming me in. Thank you for making the attempt. I first tried went, hustle. Yeah. So well, like, I kept mean, watching the clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's two innings left. I'm oh never going to make it. How did the game go? I mean, it was